gentlemen, children of the corn, welcome back to another episode of the Mindless War Podcast, presents Scare Appreciation Month. Today we have very, we have three guests again, yeah. um, three very wonderful people here. We have John, Carter, and Trey. Why don't you all introduce yourselves? I'm Trey. I'm the Wendigo of Ghost Town. <laughs> That's you, dude. I'll look at you. I'm, That's all you. you. Okay. I'm John. I was the prisoner. My whole name's Kirkland. Uh, I'm Carter. I was in Ghost Town this year. Uh, I was like a gargoyle. Really hard to describe, honestly. <laughs> horn face. Horn, horn, what she call you? Horn face. No, I have like a character description, we got, but it's we hard got, to like are you kind of identify I don't myself. Know. <laughs> yeah, it was, was kind of hard. Something new every night, then probably. It was just Pretty like, much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seriously yeah. though, honestly, I would go out yeah, there and just kind of like change it up, like it's the, the ghost way. Yeah, Ghost Town Carter. Yeah, seriously. Ghost Town Carter. Yeah, there it is. Wherever you want to be that night. Kelso, man. Kelso, just go out there. I'm all for that. Ghost Town Carter, man. Let's make that. Let's make that a thing. Yeah, yeah I'm let's down. get you a jersey that says Ghost Town Carter. Oh, just hey, bought a even jersey. better. Yeah, let's get jersey. you a new one. I'll, I'll, I'll help buy in for that. All right, <laughs> Ghost Town Carter. Oh, Ghost Town Carter. <laughs> That's cool. That's Gentlemen, uh, thank you for wanting to come on the show for starters because it's been, it's been a big thing yeah. for us this year that we've had a lot of characters towards the end of this run that wanted to come on mm -hmm. um, and really want to share their stories, and we are so thankful for that. So, for starters, thank you guys for wanting to come on and share you guys' stories, man. Yeah. I think it's freaking Excellent. awesome. Um, all right, Ghost Town, man. This is the scare zone we've had all season, and we never get tired of it. This is like the scare zone we stayed in most of the season. And um, tell us a little bit about how you guys got into Ghost Town. Trey, you uh, want to start that? Yeah. yeah well, a lot of people don't go straight to Ghost Town. A lot of people aren't lucky enough, mm -hmm. like some people. Chill. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I had my start in mazes, and I went to Carnival for a few years, and then once I thought I was done with Carnival, I moved over to Ghost Town and been there since. So, this next year will actually be my fifth year in Ghost Town. Nice. Nice. Oh, man. <laughs> and uh, for me, I started off in Fiesta in 2016. Nice. Um, I got sh that was my first year. I the character like I was just a sugar school. I that's all you can really be there. Um, I didn't really know what to do. I just walked around with the Thunder Jug. I didn't really have a character. And then when the Monkey Spot opened up in Carnival, the next year I went to Carnival and did that for two years. And then this was my first year in Ghost Town, and I was lucky enough to get uh, the Prisoner character. Nice. nice. Which is my dream character. There you go, man. Yeah. So dreams do really come true. That's a yeah. funny story too. No, it is. It really because like it's crazy how it came up because that was always a character that I always wanted to be, but I never saw it being like achievable. The prisoner yeah. dog. The pris the prisoner dog itself. Because mm -hmm. I um one of the main reasons like I got into sliding and stuff was watching John Cook. Yeah. yeah. yeah slide around. Um, guy's a hero of ours on the channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like yeah, dude, I he's one of the main guys that like sticks in my head as a monster. Him and. Cowboy Bobby and a couple others like just like I like remember s watching him scare Definitely. and he always made me want to do that character so it was really cool to do it like it was like I talked about it for years like you can ask this guy mm -hmm. like before I was even in like considering going to Ghost Town I was like oh dude like I wish the prisoner character was open <laughs> like I wish I want to audition it and this year I didn't even know it was open I just auditioned like a I auditioned this character called like the Beast Boy. It's like a. It was more similar to like my monkey character. Yeah. Like mixed with like a dog, so it was more fitting. But I was like a dog or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they just the stars aligned and you got it. somehow I was able to take the character. Nice. It was a blast. Everyone's had their like dream character that they wanted to do, especially in Ghost Town. There's such like. Oh yeah. There's the Goblin to the Bride to. There's just so many iconic characters, yeah. it's kind of hard to not just yeah. fall in love yeah. with them. Yeah, we're, we're very lucky to have, you know, time before us of all these people that cemented really solid characters oh, yeah. and really solid creatures yeah, that seriously. we can, you know, hopefully take up the reins and, you know, give our own little swing on it. Yeah, we're even, I mean, stuff. you're even seeing characters that are coming up new today that you could tell will be staples in the next 10 oh, years. Oh, yes. 100%. Like, I saw, like, a ton of rookies this year that came out and gave it their all. And you can see their character probably going to be sticking around even after they leave. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if it yeah. goes away for a little bit but then comes back eventually, like, it's still going to be there. You know what I mean? Because so many people draw so many inspiration from these characters that over the years they can try to, you know, 
they could be like 14 years old and they, yeah. when they turn 18 they're like how can I turn that into my own version of that so yeah. the biggest thing is is how creative you can be in ghost town yeah, yeah. there's like it's th sure. there's a, there's an endless amount of things that you can do uh, and it sucks because it's it's kind of the only place you can really do that in Mm -hmm. uh, boardwalk I know had some leeway for a little bit mm -hmm. um, yeah like for example when I was a boardwalk I was a monkey mm -hmm. that was the only thing that set myself apart from everyone else everyone yeah. else was just red shirt or cream shirt or brown shirt and they yeah. were all clowns and that was just it. all clowns yeah and to, it's even more uniform clowns now. Are a prop and then the hollow is very uniform and forsaken is yeah. you know you like you you can't even make your own costume there or yeah, anything. Yeah, it's all just one. But I also think it's very fitting for Ghost Town yeah. to be like that. Yeah, yeah. Seeing how it is a town. You know, yeah. it's like each year there's new people coming into the yeah. town. You can't really ever predict that. You know, and the Hollow has a storyline of its own and, and yeah. the Carnival has this, uh, you know. I mean, we were a little bit unlucky when it went to Carnival because, you know, once you got the gorilla, they were definitely switching away from, yes, you can be a gorilla to, yeah. oh, we want you to be a clown that's disguised as a gorilla. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's exactly. And that was my, like, when I wanted to do the gorilla, I had always watched uh, Eric and Trey and Sebastian, who were great, great monkeys, like yeah. really good monkeys. And I was always like, oh all yeah, very different that's what, too. all very different, like mm -hmm. very different. Like Trey is more similar to me in that he's very aggressive. Like one of the best crawlers I've ever seen, by the way. <laughs> Fast, Props dude. to him. I've full um, sprinted at the ring yeah, where we practice <laughs> and this guy keeps up. He's actually like, a monkey. Like, just I was, like going. <laughs> but like, these guys are crazy. Like Sebastian was always very like, he was just like, he literally was like a monkey. He was very so, animated. Yeah, he my was, rookie year yeah. when I saw him, he's the one that like made it like concrete. Like, oh, I want to I want to do this character someday. And when I, when I went in, they wanted me to be like, they were changing the makeup up and that kind of stuff. And it was like, oh, you're, you're not really a monkey. You're a clown painted as, or you're a monkey painted as a clown, and I was kind of just like, no, I'm a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how I'm gonna act. I'm not a clown. Like, the, like I don't scare like that at all. Yeah, I'll just get in trouble that's if I'm allowed to talk. Like that's <laughs> the truth. Yeah, just gonna go. <laughs> and, and that's what I like about Ghost Town too. Is like, like I'm not even part of the event, and I'm already coming up with like characters if I wanted to go on audition too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've been writing stuff down. Keep just, them a secret. Just keep oh, them a secret. That's yeah. the thing though. Seriously, like keep them a secret yeah. is so big because there's countless amount of times where you'll bring something up and so people will be like, oh that's cool, and then like a couple weeks later they'll be like. I had this idea and it's very yeah. similar to yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> he got straight up like, copied. Like, yeah. <laughs> this kid, there's just like, I'm not even gonna say names or anything, but like, this guy straight up was like, he was like, I'm gonna audition this. And the kid literally came back the next week and was like, oh, I'm auditioning this. And he was just like, yeah, okay. okay yeah. <laughs> like, All right, dude. All right, dude. Like, I, it was, I don't know, it was just weird. Well, I mean, yeah, that's the, that's the cool thing. I mean, like, I, I'm writing stuff like if I ever wanted to. However, I think with just the whole scheduling with what we do with this channel, yeah, and yeah. it's just like, it's really hard to get into that groove of stuff. Cause it's like, if I were to go audition for this event, he would have to take full control over the channel. And I don't mm -hmm. want to put that like whole responsibility on him. You know, I think he would do a really good job and all, but it's like, you know, I go out throughout the season and film like a bunch of just videos of you guys, you know, and just oh, yeah. to make compilations yeah. or something. We, you know? and we awesome always appreciate because, dude, that too. I'll tell you right now, like, that's kind of what like sparks a lot of haunt monsters too to like yeah. do it like seeing it. I'm trying to I like I have a YouTube channel but I don't I just post videos that like my parents get clips of me and I just throw a little montage together and yeah, just yeah. like throw some music to it like not much editing and then that's just all I have yeah yeah uh, we've been doing a lot of Instagram stuff because the music I want to use is like very mm -hmm. copywritten oh yeah oh or yeah it's like you know I want to freaking use good music not yeah. like shit you don't know it's, I mean shit you don't know sometimes is pretty good though but yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes me, it's it comes like, to the point where there's a double edged sword on it where there were some monsters that literally were there for recognition yeah. they mm -hmm. yeah and the worst part is all these kids grow up and they see these monsters and they they idolize a lot of these monsters but if you ask 90% of Haunt like, oh yeah, like this guy's really good, right? And you saw mm -hmm. No. Uh, they're backstage yeah. ninety percent of the time. Yeah. They're they're trying to videotape backstage and they'll yeah. get in trouble for that. And then they'll complain oh, yeah. like, Oh, you know, it's because I'm a YouTuber, right? Or it's because I, I do this and it's it's no, there's just there's very dead set rules that we've had for quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Just mm -hmm. no videotaping backstage. Yeah, yeah. Do your job to do your job. Yeah. If yeah. you get the recognition or if you have someone filming you out on the streets, like don't, don't let it distract your... from your character job, like yeah. you're you're trying to impress the guests mm -hmm. not guests on youtube not guests you know on your instagram page yeah if you get recognition through having an instagram page do it yeah it's just you're not doing it solely for that because a lot of us are doing it for fun there's kids oh, that yeah. grow up with kill to be in our spot mm -hmm. oh, and the fact that you're going to be there just to you know try to feel like a rock star for a month 
you're not there the right reasons. It's, yeah, so. yeah. it's kind of unfortunate because the way that Knott's, you know, kind of, not Scary Farm, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, was raised, was in a very, you know, um, fun, profound way. Mm -hmm. You know, you're constantly hearing stories about oh, the old times and the golden ages and all this and that. We used to be able to do this and that. And it's like, yeah, like that's cool and all, but as this event gets bigger, like there has to be those restrictions. Yeah, yeah. They definitely. want this to be an event that people are going to respect and yeah, continue yeah. to come back to. And yeah. if like you're doing shenanigans out there and you're not staying true to your character, creating that character integrity, you're not like, if you have people following on you on Instagram and you're posting Instagram stories backstage and like doing all this stupid stuff and it's like, it's not really helping you in any sense. You're kind of doing it just for, like he said, like that recognition so that they know yeah. like what's going on <laughs> and this and that, like, yeah, that's going to get you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's why Disney is as strong as a, of a company as it is, is because like those characters that work there, yeah. those performers, they stay true to it. They have that character integrity. Definitely. Or same you know? thing with Universal. Universal has exactly. incredibly strict guidelines compared oh, yeah. to Not Scary Farm. Yeah. And you know all of these monsters that are slowly leaving knots because either they've they've gotten in trouble for doing these things or they were just you know they were tired of the rules so they went elsewhere <laughs> they're just going to the next theme park down the road you know universal has very strict guidelines but they have a solid show because yeah. of it definitely they're, oh, yeah. they're known to be like yes they're transporting into these movies and i've built the mazes for years so i have a very like very cynical on their mazes so like yeah i'll say you know this maze isn't as good but i can say their actors are constantly staying in character definitely you're never losing the show because of the actors and if you have an actor that's messing around at knots like it, it's to a point yeah we have our shenanigans but as long as it you know you're getting entertainment out of the guests yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the guests are going to entertain or be entertained by your shenanigans or you're scaring with your shenanigans like I know in carnival we, were, we did all the stupid shit but we were getting scares the entire time mm. it was stupid stuff but we were doing shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, and that's something we've seen a lot in Ghost Town. It was like, <clears throat> people knew when the night was slow. Yeah. And that's yeah. typically yeah. when you can do more of that. That's when we get bored. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's typically when you can do more of stuff. Yeah. Now, when you have a busy night, like a Saturday night, and there's freaking traffic constantly flowing through, it's one of those nights where you know you're just going to be lapping all night. For we're, us, especially, yeah. too, like... <laughs> It's hard on those busy nights for us to even think about like doing stupid shit. Yeah, no, because your mindset is like, okay, one, it's fucking packed. Yeah. And you gotta get for everyone that's coming through that gate. You yeah. gotta go, you know, scare after scare after scare. Two, you gotta watch your back because you know oh. there's gonna be the either the asshole um, who's already drunk mm -hmm. and pre games it, you know, or the ones who think that they're tough. Or you have the, the parents who bring their kids just to kind of do whatever they want, which we've seen all three of them this season. <laughs> the the yeah. kids are by far the worst because there's, yeah, there's nothing What is wrong with these kids, man? Yeah, yeah, these kids testing. are bad. Yeah. Like, when, like, the conversations you hear out on the streets yeah, with these, like, 14-year-old girls. Like, like, what the fuck? Well, well, it's like, daddy, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that, that choked me. Dirty. Like, yeah, yeah, like, aggressive. It's like, gross. Yeah. I wore contacts for, like, a night, and they're like, look at me like that when you... You know, and it's you're just like you're like thirteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like drinking like, <laughs> in sweat, like just trying yeah, to. Like, we're more uncomfortable than these guests are. We're like, uh, what are you doing? Yeah, I've, I've heard some stuff from. from my YouTube favorite, guys. my favorite is like, oh, you know, he's hot under that, or like, you're like, yeah. what are you talking? I know, right? About? What <laughs> fantasies are you living over right, here yeah, on I'm TikTok? Wearing a black and white striped prisoner suit. Yeah, and I'm I have a face of a dog yeah. on. <laughs> my face has horns. And I can have one over here. You want me to take it off? It's just fucking black. Yeah, yeah, everywhere. What everywhere. You, what you, no, like all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> so mining. bad. Except for Decade. Like with Decade, it's kind of different. Yeah, this Decade. kid gets like love, man. All the girls love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were, we were in Bishop. Mean, you, you got to love in yeah. Bishop just by the wrong people. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were in Bishop. Like, we did a show in Bishop, California, which is kind of weird. I don't know if you know where that park. is. Bishop, California. It's pretty, it's pretty far. Oh, it's, it's a good five hour drive. It's like five hours. It's Hickville. We got some stories. It's like the base of the mountain for like Mammoth, pretty much. It's up there. Yeah, yeah. Should I with a bag of knives story. Oh, I dude, anyway. I haven't even introduced myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Right, that is true. On. We went straight to like we like hitting stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have so right. many stories the three of us. Though. Go ahead and introduce. Here you right. show up and then we'll go back and back. So of what was it? It was just like name and like <laughs> stuff like that. All right, uh, I'm Carter. You know, uh, this is my third year working hot. Stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot what you did. You didn't even introduce him. That's right. It went straight, it went, it just went straight into it. And then oh, like, you catch me laughing all the time. I laugh at everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't control it. Like, Us two 
Christian this guy, No, no, it's this that. guy, dude. This guy just makes me laugh. I'm not doing anything. Some stupid shit. I'll just start laughing. <laughs> Shut up. All right. All right. Keep... <laughs> Here we go. So it's my third year working hot. Um, my first year, I auditioned for Streets. I just said I'm open for a Streets position. Um, and I ended up just getting maced. Uh, and I honestly enjoyed it. It was a it was a great experience. Um, I was in Pumpkin Eater. I was Peter. Um, and the first weekend in that maze, they put me in the very last room. In the, the first, oven? In the, <laughs> dude. Oh, that that room. Dude. You want to talk about the fucking oven? It's an the oven. Thing that moves? You didn't have to build it. <laughs> no, I didn't. But I had oh, to sit right, in there. Yeah. <laughs> luckily, luckily, I will say I was very privileged. We have uh, cast A, cast B sets where you're on a very, you're on an hour on, hour off set. Mm -hmm. um, That's so easy. So, but I'm in there, and originally you needed it the most. I know, seriously. Go on. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> originally, I'm in there, and I was cast B, and I'm in this kilt with this leather chest piece and this full head leather mask. Nice. Um, and I'm in there, and there's a heat lamp. Oh, nice. There's a heat lamp you and a better. vibrating floor. And I'm in there, and I'm like, dude, I can't do this. My legs are going numb. I'm sweating my ass off. That's I couldn't do it. So I was like... I went up to Cassie, I'm like, yo, is there any other room I can be in? Like, I'm fucking dying, dude. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, dude, just roam. Just he's roam. like, it, the maze is about you, so just, the maze is yours. And I was like, oh, okay, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm um, that swinging pumpkin and just nailed oh, people I'm so, all night. Oh, all night. <laughs> you can cut that, right? They're, they're not going to hear this. But anyways, guys. Gotcha. Uh, no, I went all over through that maze, and I had a blast. Um, and then I met this kid, because there's a break room um, that we would go to. And it was the same break room he would go to, and so we met, and uh, you know we became friends. And he wanted me to come to Boardwalk the next year. And I was like, "Fuck yeah, I'll go to Boardwalk. Like mm -hmm. that'll be fun." I'll, you know, I, I was kind of back and forth on whether or not I wanted to audition a clown or I wanted to also audition a monkey. Um, the thing about me though is I'm tall and lengthy, and this kid's kind of a monkey. So, <laughs> uh, no, but you guys both are. You guys have the same build, so it's good you guys are monkey. It's weird if I'm a monkey. We're just um, not sticks. Me and Sammy, we're, we're just not. spider yeah. monkey. We're like, yeah, yeah. I'm a spider monkey. Me and Sammy are gonna audition the giraffe character next. Yes, day. yes. no, that's the me. Giraffe. I'm the giraffe. That's I have crazy, a long man. neck. Um, there you but neck. <laughs> but uh, no, I I went into the audition, and uh, you know I was like I'd like to audition for Boardwalk, and they're like, cool, show us a clown, and uh, I do my thing. And at the end of it, they send us out, and it was a group of five. And uh, it was me and a friend of mine named Aaron Griffin uh, that got kept outside. And I mean, it was just me and him. The three others got pulled back inside, and we looked at each other. And he goes, you know, this could either be really good or really bad. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go with really good. And he's like, um, he's like, I'm freaking out. He wants to come to Ghost Town. And uh, so they bring us back in. And uh, they go, okay, so we're not going to send you to Boardwalk. Um, you weren't wonky enough. And I was like, wonky enough? I'm like, dude, I'm wonky. <laughs> That's the first time you know, you've ever heard wonky that. wonky enough. <laughs> and uh, uh, right after that, right after that, uh, our cast lead, Denise, interrupted them. And was like, ah, you have very dark energy is, is what they're trying to say. Uh, so we would like to pull you to Ghost Town. And I was like, shit, all right. Um, I'll take it. And so I walk outside. And uh, this kid calls me up, and he's like, yo, man, like, what'd you get? I was like, I got a ghost town. He's like, ha, what'd you get? <laughs> I remember that. It's not my and I was, like, I was like, dude, I got, I got ghost town. And he was kind of relying on his friends to get dude, ghost town. And all of us didn't, or he was relying on all of us to get dude, boardwalk. Yeah. So and crazy. none of us got boardwalk. <laughs> like, uh, we were friends with a guy named Mike Centeno, and he, got, he auditioned for boardwalk, got put back in ghost town. Uh, we had a friend named Kenny and Ken. It was Andrew too. And Andrew, Andrew. remember Andrew was at Open Eye that year, and he didn't even get. He didn't get it either. We were all like, yeah. We were all James did going to Boardwalk. Yeah. That was the plan. Yeah. None of it. No, none I, of it worked out. I only wanted to stay because all these dudes were like, yeah, we're all going to Boardwalk, and I was like, oh man, I want to audition Ghost Town, but I'll stay. <laughs> I'll stay. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> got yeah, fucked over. Yeah, 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 Ghost Town like, fucked boom. over, man. But My friend Kenyon like quit after the second week, and I was just like, all right, this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he hated Whatever. it. But, it's still um, fun, though. Yeah. So then I had my first year in Ghost Town. It was generic townsfolk, and um, I did my season. I had a blast. Um, and then second year comes around. And if it's your first year in Ghost Town, you have to re audition the next year. Yeah. Um, so th that brings us to this year, and I go in, I audition. They put me back in Ghost Town. And uh, originally, I, I just auditioned 
as uh, a ferret. I wanted to bring a ferret. Nice. Um, but the casting director at the time said, well, I, I like you as a cowboy, so we're going to keep you there, you know, in a generic townsfolk. So I was like, all right, whatever, I'll just, I'll make the ferret my own. Like, I can create, like, my own mask and my own costume, and I'll do that. Um, and I was planning on that. I got a life cast done by James Contreras, great guy, you know, makes great masks. Um, so, so I was going to get... that in there? What's that? You're just plugging yeah, that in there? He's talented as hell, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, that guy, no, this guy's yeah. nice. So, yeah, anyways, I, uh, I was going to get a mask, and then uh, a couple weeks after audition goes by, I get a phone call from Nods. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, hey, like, uh, you know, just curious if you're available um, to come work the announcement event. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude, this is my, I only worked one year streets, one year maze. Like, why the hell am I getting a call for the announcement event? Yeah. So I'm like, you know, fuck it, I'll do it. So I'll do the announcement event. And then he gets a call and he gets the announcement event. Um, so we both <laughs> go into it. And this, and we go into the announcement event. This is a total, <laughs> total shit show. <laughs> we go in, and it's three days of like rehearsals, and then the full eight hour of the of the announcement event. And uh, we didn't know what makeup we were going to be in because everyone there's in makeup. Mm-hmm. And uh, he auditioned the prisoner dog. And we go in, <laughs> and they give him his costume, but he made his own, so he wore his own. And uh, they put him in 2D. He had a makeup time before me. And they put him in 2D. He's supposed to be a dog. <laughs> so I had like glo- I had like my dog gloves, His dog and gloves and everything. But it's whatever. It's like one of no, those yeah. I was just fortunate to be there. Yeah. so I didn't really care. It was just one of those funny. It was funny because he was like, Dude, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, <laughs> like, like, I, like, I just looked like dirty. Wrong. Like I just looked like a dirty like 2D dirty makeup. Man, so I was yeah. just like, what the fuck, man? Like, you know, <laughs> just me, dude. Like. I'm just John right now, like, I'm yeah. not... Ghost Town John. Ghost so like, John. Yeah, dude, the Ghost Town John. The Ghost Town John. <laughs> um, okay, so ahead, then, I end up going into makeup, and they put the prosthetic on me, and it's the prosthetic I wore this year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, throughout the night, uh, there's a, I guess, a manager, caller, pasta. Yeah. One of our managers was uh, was there, and she was like, man, I, I really like you in that piece. I was like, oh, I wish I was in makeup. And she was like, you're not in makeup. And I was like, no, I'm not. And she was like, well... That's unfortunate, and I was like, but I know someone who's be willing to switch, and um, and so I got in contact with him, and you know we swapped makeup times. Yeah. Um, so he took my mask spot, and I took his makeup time, and then they put me into that uh, prosthetic, which I had no idea what to do with it. <laughs> uh, I was just very grateful to be put in makeup. Um, throughout the season, I learned what I wanted to be and what I'm going to become. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm super stoked for that. Uh, but originally, I was like, dude, what is this piece even called? Like, what? It was like character name. Like, what, what do I call this thing? And so I asked, and it's called Fuego. So I'm like, all right, dude, this thing's got to be like a gargoyle of some sorts. You know, it's got horns. It looks all weird. It's got a weird lip. Yeah. Oh, dude, that was bad. Um, no, they painted me literally blackface with flames. Nice. Dude, it, it was like red sick, and yellow. Yeah, it was tight. It looked awesome. With the man. neck, I think it was the look. But um, no, yeah, I I really didn't know what to do with it. So originally, I said like Sarah Marshall. You know, when she came into town, she possessed me to be one of her. You know, kind of I guess like demon dogs is what I wanted it to be. Um, nice. Uh, just to be like very beasty. I didn't want to be a human. I'll talk too much shit. I'll get into that. <laughs> uh, you so I, no. I wanted to, <laughs> dude. I wanted to be like an animal, so I knew that I couldn't talk. Um, and so then I just kind of created it my own. And each night, like you said, I just kind of went out doing different things. And uh, so the prisoner cactus next year. Yeah. Prisoner Ghost cactus. town tumbleweed. Ghost town screaming goat. Yeah. We can go on for days about this. <laughs> Ghost town mountain goat. Ghost town tombstone. I got the tombstone would be lit. <laughs> just tombstone. Yeah. You would just stand there and fall over face first. Yep. I have like two characters that I've like written down that I've like for a couple of my friends. Like, I got a character that I can get out, like, yeah. that I just thought Yeah, of, you like, kind of just come up with I was, like, like literally driving, and I thought of a character. I was like, that'd be a pretty cool character. I'd love to see that. And then I started writing it down, and then I was, like, I got really into, like, the story of it. I was yeah. talking to this guy, he's like, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, then, and then, like, like we came up with one last night that we were like, this is... And we got really into detail on that one. Oh, yeah. And it was like, if I ever wanted to audition one of the two characters, like, I could. But, yeah. Yeah. Or if I wanted to give him out to someone who would audition, I could just go be like, here's my fucking Frankenstein's monster right there. It's yeah. beautiful. 
Um, I mean, dude, if you wanted to do Ghost Town, that's your dream zone. Show up to Open Higher. You never know. There was yeah. like 40 dude, people from Yeah, Open this Higher year was year. a hit for Ghost Town for yeah, sure. Yeah. There was like a bunch of people that had never worked on I think we had Ghost like Town. a record of rookies this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what like, like, I'm man. Like, it was so like many, really half Ghost not many from or... other street zones yeah. either. There was really only like, like a lot 12. of Open Higher. A lot of people were afraid to audition for Ghost Town. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. because, one, there's, you know, there's. An expectation when it comes to going to Ghost Town, like yeah. it took me forever to be like, okay, I'm ready to audition. Yeah. And two, years. it's just like, you know, Haunt is like a big high school. Everyone has rumors. Everyone, it's you know, tight. makes these little clicks that they think exist that don't really. Oh yeah, the clicks. And people are like, oh yeah, I hear the people in Ghost Town are mean. Honestly, I've, I've been with or been into, and I've worked with a bunch of people from every single zone. This Ghost Town's family. Ghost Town's probably the nicest zone oh, I've ever been in. 100%. Sorry, my uncle, when I get into it, we're going to be called the nobodies. Yeah. Like, yeah, legit, like, when I was in Fiesta, everyone was super cool, but I was more reserved and quiet. Yeah, yeah. When I went to Boardwalk, it was just drama. Like, yeah. there was just nonstop Ghost drama and for no reason. And I go to Ghost Town, and everyone is so cool. Like, everyone. Just, like, Boardwalk's every day, just a big dysfunctional family. Yeah. And it always has been. Like, in some, di or some years, it works out. And like you get just some of the most creative people in it, yeah. and then there's other years that it's just crash and burn. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I noticed this year in Boardwalk, a lot of the the new people there were rad, yeah. like really good. That's I was happy to see that. Um, but when I was there, it was just not for me. Like, I just had a bad experience there, and it just I was like, eh. But when I came over to Ghost Town, it was like a a breath of fresh air. It was really cool. It was like everyone was always asking, like, how's your night going? Like. Everyone was super cool. Like, if there was ever a problem, we all had each other's backs. Definitely. Like, there was a situation where um, this uh, a female talent in our zone got her legs kicked from under her, oh, like nervous. completely. And she's one of the, one of the characters that's more on the ground. And uh, one of one of our other characters grabbed me and she, like we had her back. Like this guy was trying to like Just yell. Immediately. Like she was yelling. Like this uh, the girl that was standing up for her, uh, Snooky. Uh, she has, she's pie. Cordelia not. Yeah. Um, she was like, you hit our monster. The pie. Yeah. The pie, she was like stand, completely standing up for her to, in a way I've never seen before. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, you know, you know, like everyone cares for each other. It was really cool. That was like a cool experience. The amount of times that all three of us were either pulled to get security or yeah. to, like, oh, yeah. to just protect talent until security came. Yeah. And luckily all of us were beast-like characters, so we pretty much just became like attack dogs and just... We did. The amount of times that I had to like shoulder guests away from some of our female talent or our smaller talent, like, or even, even like even us, like the amount of times that I've been hit, shoved, yeah. or like got knives pulled on me before. <laughs> don't like, even say it. Don't even say it, dude. <laughs> well, some of us I'm gonna say it before you. Go, Last gonna... year I got jumped. No, 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 oh. no, no, no. <laughs> That's yeah, not what I'm laughing about. I just under the bus. I'm laughing about you getting thrown over the fence. Oh, <laughs> yeah, was this year, right? Damn. I forgot about that. Damn. Yeah, this is right across the, sh like, right by Spurs. You know yeah. what Spurs is? <laughs> oh, my God, dude. This, like, burly. Do you think wrestling is fake? <laughs> dude. Yeah, again. Oh, here's the thing, dude. I, this, just, I just remember uh, one of the talent came over, and they were like, you see that gas get thrown over the fence? And I walked up, I'm like, dude, that was me! <laughs> and he's like, oh, the guy took off. I'm like, oh, cool, sweet. <laughs> see you later. Yeah, no, this big, like, 6'6 six, six guy. I was over by Spurs, and I, I came up, and I, I like to jump really high into my slides. Don't know why. Um, and I jumped up, and I hit the ground, and I looped around. And I hear this guy following me, and I'm like, dude, what the fuck's this guy doing? <laughs> so I, like, turn around, and as I turn, I, like, put my arms on the fence, and as I turn, this guy just puts his hands <laughs> under my <laughs> armpits and just picks me up. And, like, he, he didn't push. He didn't push, but I'm tall enough to where, like, the where he picked me up, like, he let go, I just went backwards. Damn. Right over the fence, landed right in the aloe. Like, <laughs> if he would have taken me, like, two feet over, I would have been in a cactus. I was like, yeah. what? I would have paid to see Dude, this. My he God, was, was so, so rattled. Funny. I was so rattled. He came I out, like, we were over my ghost I, like, crawl over the fence. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> I was like, dude, Dude, let's get some water, man. Like, let's go to 
He's so rattled. Lloyd's very punched. Dropped you, dude. Dude, yeah. pick me up. I, I feel I like if that would happen to anyone else, though, they'd have been like, I'm going home. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. No, we, we're, we're, we just get bothered. We'll go yeah. backstage, get a drink of water. Punch a wall, like, we'll you know. We'll go laugh uh, about it. We'll be like, dude, you'll never believe what happened. Or we'll go and tell our friends, and either it's like one or two ways that they'll react to us. Like, one is like, oh, dude, that's fucked up. We gotta go find the guy. Or we'll just laugh at them. Or they'll shoot Boba at him. Yeah. Yeah. We had a Boba war backstage. We did. Oh, I was sitting backstage, just like walking. Because <laughs> like when I go on break, break I just, I'm full they're a lot more social balls. on their breaks. When I go on break, I like, like to just, I like to just sit down in my chair and just relax. Yeah. I'm, I'm fucking tired, like yeah. honestly. And I sit there, and they start shooting boba at me. <laughs> so, What's up, Andrew? And yeah, we were, we were hitting him in like the chest. There was like 16 boa balls like on his chest just stuck yeah. on before he was like, stuck wait, in my what costume. the? <laughs> yeah, he'll just go sit in his chair, put on his earbuds, and I, I, we were shooting him. Where, who were we shooting at first? Me. I was Snooky. <laughs> we kind of just were like, yo, you want to shoot boba at John? Like, it was just kind of like one of those things where our chemistry just worked. And we were like, yeah. and you're boom. <laughs> we were just shot and then, him. And he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then we got pretty far. And it was like, everyone was watching. Why are we talking like about this? <laughs> we were shooting boba like, dude, like 30, 40 feet. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 The backstage yeah. shenanigans. It's like, it's what makes half of the job. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah, yeah honestly. Honestly. There's a lot of shenanigans and like fun stuff that people don't see. That's mm-hmm. the fun stuff that we want to hear about, though. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or we don't see that we want to hear. Yeah. About. We're gonna talk about the time I got chased down by the guy that works in the gum shop. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no. no you That's off camera. That's not off camera. Dude, I want to get those steps that was back. Gnarly. Remind <laughs> me about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you guys, you guys, so you guys have, you guys have your years here at Knotts. Yeah, you've been doing this for a while, and um, obviously you guys keep coming back. Cause it's a fun job, I assume, and it mm-hmm. looks like it's a fun job. And um, what was your biggest thing coming in this year with the whole new lore of the Sarah Marshall thing? Like, how did you guys mm-hmm. start to fit that into character development? I mean, personally, me, it was my first year, so I had like. I was just was I, I didn't I didn't even think about it really yeah, it wasn't yeah. even really considered in my character yeah, yeah. however when I saw that it was like a whole plan or whatever because mm-hmm. like the announcement event we were we were, we were yeah. able to see the, like origins getting announced and everything yeah, yeah it was like whoa this is really cool I didn't know it was gonna be a part of rope drop until like opening night and we did it that is it true same, I didn't know that it was either. like the same thing and I was like oh this is cool like there's more you know there's more background now like yeah. the origins origins coming out like it was a beautiful maze like it was a good way to kick it off. I'm anxious to see where they go with it, honestly. I am too. But really character-wise, yeah, like, really, it had nothing to do with my character. Like, you just went out there. I think <laughs> one of the biggest, yeah. one of the hardest things is, is when they, uh, you know, Sarah Marshall is supposedly in control of all the characters in Ghost Town. Yeah. All right, right? That's that's what I possess, right? So, the, the issue is, is when. We didn't really get told that tale opening weekend, or like our well, our like dress rehearsals. Well, from my understanding, the original curse is like you know the, the witch gets hung and she cast a curse on to to Ghost Town to pretty much twist them into the darkest versions of themselves. Oh yeah. So that's mm-hmm. why animals were created. Like if it was you know a thief or something, they'd become like a demented raccoon kind of thing. That's where animal mm-hmm. characters came from. Mm-hmm. Shout and out the, R.A. Coon. Sure. Yeah, shout out to the homie. <laughs> but uh, there were just there were demons of like so there was demon possessed children. That's some of our best characters that we've ever had on streets. There was you know the bride that was left at the the altar that she got turned into you know a demonically possessed version of herself. It's not the fact that the the witch controlled us at any means. It was just the fact that she created pure evil and then just released it onto the town kind of thing. And that story has been going for so many years at this point that honestly it didn't have any effect on my character because, you know, that was the backstory originally. It's just now it's finally been brought to the public's attention Yeah. in a way that is fully explained. It was just you know, haunt lore. Yeah. And if you're a major haunt fan, like, you know, then you, know you knew that. this lore before. You've known the lore of all these, you know. This like, one actually just finally, they gave it a story. They finally gave it a maze. Yeah. They yeah, finally kidding. gave it a story. And thank God John Cook took it because that guy has hit a home run on every single maze. He's, he's so out. showtime through that guy. Yeah. That guy, he's all Hollywood. Channel. He's like, the, the, you see that guy and you just, you're just like, yeah. Every maze that, that he's done beast. is like, golden like Dude, it's just it's so the good. guy works three haunts that we know of i know i saw that, that on like know of. dark harbor and he does no, shit four in haunts Russia. that we know of well he has he has an escape room or he had an escape room had too escape room. oh wow escape room. which was awesome 
Like we, he does four haunts that we know of. And when he gets the free time, he's got a fucking band. Yeah. He does band stuff. And then he's That's a full-time crazy. dad. I don't know how the guy freaking just lives his life. That he, guy is just... He is constantly working, and he'll bring his kid a lot. Like, when yeah. we were building Origins, Mason would come and hang out with us every once in a while. We'd yeah. show Mason all the stuff that his dad's been designing and things like that. Or he would come, and we'd pretty much ask him the questions. Like, hey, you know, this this isn't working because, you know... I love John, but he likes to bit, put really giant facades into very small <laughs> places. So it's to the point where, like, we'll build the facade in the shop and then take it out and then go, dunk. Oh, crap. <laughs> and we'll have to, like, you know, he'll come oh, out crap. the next day, like, hey, uh, that don't work. And he'll be like, okay, right, we'll do this instead, and kind <laughs> of thing. But he was constantly switching from each event. And luckily, from my understanding, he's definitely, like, the design mm-hmm. aspect. And then he'll come and make sure that his design is being like really put into to practice and then there's certain events that he'll put in more work get down and dirty and like really you know get into the construction aspect like and that used to be knots when knots was like his one thing mm-hmm. now that knots is, he's just a designer at this point yeah, yeah. he's you know they'll buy his design and then we'll come and make sure that his design is realized but you know he is switching pretty well and he'll put the work in where he needs to and luckily everything that he's touched has turned to gold in the horror world and it's because he has such a passion for the events and for Halloween itself. So, like, he raised, or he came in as a haunt monster. He worked as a haunt monster for years. It's why the best, you know, mazes come from haunt monsters is because they care about the event more than just some guy that's like, ah, oh, I'm going to make a scary thing. Mm-hmm. Comes so. in instead of a suit coming in, you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm, taking yeah. over the event and everything. Yeah. And Someone I was, who freaking lives and breathes horror. And I was lucky enough to work on Paranormal, which was his first maze. Mm-hmm. So that was like when he was fresh into designing, like it was a really fun experience and we put our heart and soul into that maze. Like usually when you're building, you'll switch from venue to venue as they switch. Me and the person that I was building with, that were like the two people that were majorly building that maze as far as carpentry goes. And we had more people come in over once in a while and they would they would switch in and now we'd have a rotating crew, but it was me and him for most of it. And we built that from the day one of my build to the day before hunt, we were building that maze. So that's why Paranormal stands up to this day, it's because so much effort was put into making it good. Definitely, yeah. I would love to see uh, what comes next, man, from just the mazes that keep leaving, and they could, it's always just a surprise to see what's going to come next. Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah, think, I know, seriously. You think how they can top the next one, and it's just like, how are they going to top you know, the next one? Then yep. just came. Shut up, Waxworks came. Devil's Shut the devil's den. Yeah. Devil's den, man. That's that was hilarious. But it's just one of those years where every time you come back, how are they going to top that? Yes. And so. they bring it back. Waxworks Origins, fucking top. How they can s- they? How can they go from there? You know what I mean? They somehow the cool, do every year. And the cool thing they is, do. the designers are definitely competing with each other. Like, yeah, yeah. They got it was it. so funny hearing you know John talk to me like, "Hey, is uh, is Danny been asking about my maze?" Like, yeah. He's like, "You told me anything." I like to hear and then Daniel and then Daniel will come in like oh well you know we, we put in so much time into into Johnny's maze and I was, I was just yeah you know, I'm wondering why we haven't started on the pumpkin houses yet and he would always do that <laughs> so yeah, dude, hey, wait, it sounds like, like that <laughs> I saw your the house you built for a pu- pumpkin eater oh yeah that was fun months. I had to take it down with I had Tyler. to take it down it's not that hard people make it sound so bad no it's cool it's just it turned out great it's dude. just giant yeah it's just awkward that's cool, man. I mean, we haven't had we we haven't been fortunate enough to have a lot of behind the scenes people on the mm-hmm. show, which is something we would love to do too. Like, give them their own month because not a lot of people realize. Not only are characters noticed, but a lot of people don't notice the people who put these events on. Yes. Uh, which me and him, we were in theater in high school. We worked behind the scenes. Stage we crash. know what the work goes into to putting on a production. And it also you know? curses you walking through the mazes because instead of like completely being you know, diving into the you know, immersion, you're like, you know all the details. Oh, how are they lighting that? Or you'll you'll touch the wall like, ah, this is a nice pole part. Or they made their cave with this. Why didn't we do that? Yeah, like, yeah. You go into more of a behind the scenes kind of look, detailing mm-hmm. rather than actually enjoying the actual experience yeah. that's given to you. That is the same thing with us when we would do shows. It'd be like, well, fuck, we could have made that sound better, or mm-hmm. that could have been lit better, or you know, there's always something that yeah. you know mid production when it's going down where you're like, well, fuck, we could have done that I better. Think, and there's a lot of times when you're building it, you have to like literally take a step back, like, will a normal guest notice this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, you want to put on yeah. the ultimate show, but it's when a time with time and money and mm-hmm. 
you know, we want to get this done so we can put more effort into something else or because you can't put all of your effort into one single maze, you have to make sure you have an entire park that's a good experience. You don't want one maze to fall flat because it's a, it's a weak link. Yeah. So you helped build Origins this year? Yes. So how long did it take process-wise to do it all? Um, man, I was in there for a while. I think when I was there, I think I was in there for five weeks. Mm -hmm. The back was pretty much done. And then I left before it was completely finished. Like the out, the outside facade still had to be finished. Um, paint was still in there, props were still in there. Like a maze can go from, I think, five or six weeks, like Waxworks took, to yeah. two months, like another maze. Um, like Infected got put up this year in four weeks. Yeah. Well, but it's also an older maze. Yeah. So like new mazes definitely take longer because you're building everything from scratch mm -hmm. and it's just you're waiting on one department over the other. Like I'm in carpentry so we were waiting on these light boxes for a while because we didn't have uh, LED strip tape mm -hmm. and we couldn't put these light boxes in without the lights. So we kept waiting for these lights to, to arrive and we were ordering, we were ordering, they just weren't coming in, weren't coming in. So we had these like light boxes that were completely done, ready to be painted and we just couldn't install them for mm -hmm almost like three weeks. So it's just all about timing too, depending yeah. on when stuff comes, stuff comes in. in. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And but usually Knott's is very good about, <clears throat> you know, trying to order our stuff, making sure we're, we're readily stocked. Hitting deadline and everything. Yeah. yeah, and when the more that we hit deadlines, the better that the event ends up going, the mm -hmm. less that we have to work overtime. Like my first year I was working in carpentry, I was doing 12 hour <laughs> shifts five days a week starting the first weekend or first week of august mm -hmm. all the way up to the first day of hunt wow and then this last year i was lucky enough to not have to do that we were doing very minimal overtime comparatively or like having to do overtime it was it was offered a lot yeah and you know it's like oh we can do this 12-hour shift and get this done but a lot of us have other jobs or just it burns you out You're, it's not easy work by any means oh yeah, yeah no, no, definitely, definitely. It's, we got the pleasure of yeah I got to learn down. that this off season I got to learn all about you know we did strike this last year we never we didn't build any mazes or anything but taking it down you get to see all the hard work and everything and it's crazy to like look in those mazes when the lights are on and be like wow there is there is so much detail that's like never seen never, never seen. you never <laughs> barely seen. seen like I went to the bug room and uh, pumpkin eater because we were spending a lot of time over there. And uh, it was crazy to just look at the walls and be like all the different like bugs and stuff and like like just everything. Like it's the detail, like, like those big pumpkin seeds that were in there. And I don't know, it was just cool. And even Dark Ride too, like there's stuff I never mm -hmm. saw. I He got to see more Origins. He was there. You were in Origins like the whole time. I was in Origins the so, whole time. It took the Origins to go out fast. Cause they, they put the sand, sand, sand in there. Yeah, so, so and we put those up too. The, yeah, me and Danny and Elijah put up the the uh, Santa's workshop. Yeah. And that How long did the strike take? How long did it take to get it out? It all out? depends. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where it's like to get it all out is a whole conversation in itself. But each maze is also like a conversation within it. I can tell you that strike goes all year when you really think about it, because they're they're off. You know, off property mazes that are you know backstage mm -hmm. that are up all year round. Yeah, we'll do about the most that we can do without taking down the entire front. We we follow fire code very strictly because they've burned us quite a few times. No pun intended. <laughs> um, so we had to make four four foot bridges to make sure that everything was four feet away from the warehouse. We had to make sure all of outside things were fully sealable. Um, Everything had like emergency doors so people couldn't get in, but if they got trapped inside, a fire happened, they can get out kind of thing. Um, so the mazes that have to come down are usually the in-park mazes, so Pumpkin Eater on the outside of the park has to come out. Yeah. yeah. That, that has to come out immediately. Same thing with Origins or anything else that's in Wilderness Dance, all that has to come out. And then there's like, you know, the second run of things, like Infected will come down, but that's not, you know, crazy priority yeah. you know getting Christmas out sooner but as soon as Christmas is out Christmas is you know out and running all those mazes are done in the park then infected goes or then the next maze goes they, they want, want to prioritize, prioritize yes for the, the next, next season, season.
and whatever's in park. Every single entertainment team, they're not doing just Halloween. Yeah, they're yeah. doing Halloween, they're doing summer, they're doing Christmas, they're doing Boysenberry Fest, they're doing Peanuts Festival. Yeah. So it's going to be switching, and Halloween is a year-round thing. So it'll go from Halloween for about a month to Boysenberry for about a month, and then Halloween for another month, and then, all right, let's get summer pushed out, or let's rehab Peanuts and then get that out. So everything is constant. constant yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's insane, insane to know, you know the process, process of how it is with the show business of Knox, because you can only imagine what Fucking Disney sounds like. You know what I mean? It's, it's like Knox, like, 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 just, you do Disney too? You, you do Disney too? Man, you do. I, I just switched over this last year to a full-time position at Disney in their uh, in their carpentry shop off-site. Um, so I'm building a lot of things for special events. Mm -hmm. Um, things of that nature, and I'm leaving the farm as far as carpentry goes, sadly. Um, but it's you know it's a step that I have to take to kind of one more close, another one on yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how it is, man. And luckily, I have a schedule at Disney that allows me to continue to do my vacation of Scary Farm and be able to see my friends and scare, and still be a part of the you know the company and event that's been such a big part of my life. Yeah. So, when did you all know you wanted to become Knott's Monsters? Uh. I want to say my first year, whenever I once I finally grew enough balls to go, because <laughs> I was a big, big scaredy cat before I went. Because my dad, you know, he hyped it up to be this huge thing, and you know, so scary and the monsters, and you know, he's playing fucking mind games with me, telling me like, oh, they'll touch you, they'll take you away, they're gonna put you in a, you know, and I was just like, you're just like. Mm. Fuck that. Like, I'm not doing that, uh, you know? So I finally went, and the first year was 2013. And, and once I went, I was absolutely terrified. But as soon as I left, you know, I sat there and I was like, dude, that was a lot of fucking fun. I, had a, I actually had a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I didn't actually live out here at the time. I lived in, uh, where was I then? Tennessee. I was living in Tennessee. No, I was living in Rhode Island. Oh, Rhode Island at the time. And, um, a couple months went by, and then all of a sudden, an iconic video, Skidda, oh, Skidda man. came up, and uh, I was like, "What the hell is this thing?" And so I click it, and it's this guy, and he goes by Skidda, and um, he was a madman. He was a goblin. He was insane. And, and I started watching all these sliding videos and March Madness, yep. and, um, you know, all all these different like things that go into the event and I and it just kind of like slowly just pulled me in mm -hmm. and uh, finally like year after year I, I went I went I went and the pass came out um, I flew out here stayed out here for a month I went every weekend um, and then finally came auditions and I was like I have to audition yeah I have to it was, yeah it was kind of it's kind of a similar story like I was always really scared um, I wasn't that. My parents were more strict, and they were like, "Oh no, you can't go." Kind of like until I think I was in maybe fifth or sixth grade, and I went, and I was terrified, especially of Necropolis. That zone terrified me. Like shout out to all the people that did that zone. Um, I don't really m remember much about Ghost Town then, but I specifically remember Necropolis and like Carnival back when they had chainsaws. Mm -hmm. And then uh, chainsaws. I didn't go into Carnival. But but then. When I got in high school, uh, for me, I was never, I'm different from a lot of haunt people to where a lot of people have like background experience with like scare acting and all that stuff. For me, it was just like, like in high school or in middle school, it's like, yo, let's find a group, let's go to Not Scary Farm. It was that type of thing. I was never really, I never really knew if I was going to work it or not until like around my junior year of high school. I was like, oh, this would be so sick to do. Like, I want to slide, like this would be cool. Like I tried sliding like in my front lawn, like my front porch actually, um, with like Protec knee pads. So they worked, They were. I was able to slide, like it worked. It just hurt my knees really bad. Yeah. And and then eventually my senior year of high school, I was like next year I got, I, I had the pass and I was like, I gotta do this, this is so fun. It changed from being like, oh, this is like a social thing to like, I, same like him, like I was going every weekend with a group of friends and I was like, I love the mazes, like, I think that was Forevermore's last year. Oh, such a good maze. Forevermore's last year, and I was just like, I love this maze, like, I love all this stuff, like, I want to do streets, like, I want to be a street monster at Knott's, like, I want to do this. Like, I would even do a maze, like, if I, you know, if it was offered or whatever. And then, finally, I saw it on Facebook that they were doing auditions, and I got a 10.30, I got a 10.30 time slot, and auditioned, and... Got Fiesta and I was like, all right. And ever since then, it's been like each year has been like 
I think I love this even more. More, like, more, and more. Yeah. I, it was crazy because like after my third year in Carnival, I was starting to think like, oh, maybe I'm going down the backside yep. of this. Maybe, uh, maybe this isn't really what it is. And then I go to Ghost Town, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like I'm gonna be doing this for a long time. Like I loved it. It was so. It changed. It literally revamped my haunt career like 100. percent Like it. I, like it was the last night of haunt, and I was like sad. Like I, I was. We I stayed did, out. For I stayed out extra hour. hour. I didn't yeah. want to leave, and like in other zones, I'd be like, "All right, let's get out of here." By that, by that, by that time of the season, you're so burnt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, I could go another two weeks. I could oh, easily. Weeks. I was having a, like, I, I was do that another fun. month. Honestly. It was that fun, and I see why people stay in Ghost Town for as long as they do. Definitely. I mean, I can't speak on like Camp Snoopy because I've never done that, mm -hmm. but like for Ghost Town, that was like for me, it was like the best. Like it was just the best, like overall. It's like a mm -hmm. playground. We yeah. passed by them pretty well all the time. We did some PTSD, man. Dude, yeah, I trust us. We know that it's was like, the hardest part about doing strike was I had to be there, there the day after haunt ended yeah. and not be able to scare. And it was just like was all just the scary. Halloween directions or decorations were up, and I was just going around and, and you know the little stage that they all stand yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So we had to like take that apart and like cart it over backstage, and I was just like, oh, this is like, this is just slapping me in the face. Yeah. This is over. Yeah. yeah. Man, but we do need our time to rest, especially yeah, us. We, yeah, you know, we we slide, like we don't just slide and we don't just slide and like for haunt. Like that's the case, We start sliding in in March. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, so we, uh, if not earlier. If oh not, yeah, if not earlier. Know, slide like, reading and everything. Dude, sliding has created a whole nother thing. I think for us, and it, I I don't know if I could ever go and do you know scare acting at Universal or a place where they don't provide sliding. Um, simply because it, it it allows me to stay with it mm -hmm. um i come from an, an, an athletic background uh, where i played sports all through school and to be able to kind of continue that in a way uh to be able to continue to practice on my craft and continue to get better at something uh it, you know that really keeps me going uh, especially running with guys like these two uh, they're, they're people that I, I've, I look up to when it comes to it. They have more experience. They have, uh, you know, way more experience than I do. And, and, I, and I honor that and I respect that. And so um, they helped me become like what I want to be at one point. Um, I don't know when that'll be. Hopefully, when these guys go into wheelchairs before I do, it's, it's funny because he's talking. He's talking about himself like he's like a young slider. This kid fucks shit up, man. But like, I am. I am. I've only for been a first year for slider. A, like sliding for a year. He like, I like, like. There's always talk about like awards and stuff, like slider of the year and all this stuff. Like I honestly thought like either like it wasn't gonna be him, or, or like I thought it was gonna be him. Like honestly, like this kid, like this kid can slide. Like especially because like usually your first year sliding in a zone is like. Mm -hmm. Like not even Ghost Town too. Like I feel like Ghost Town's probably the hardest for sliding because it's so dark and everything. Yeah. And the fog. But like it's the ground is bad. There's it's dark as hell, so you can't see. And there's corners. There's corners everywhere. Every single other zone, you have plenty of vision of where you're going, where you're gonna be. Yeah. You're not gonna have a guest. Yeah. You're out of nowhere, and suddenly you have to bail out. It's like I, sometimes I think about it. And I'm like, I don't even know how I just like made that. No, gap. there's so many times like, where you you hit a slide. You're just like, whoa. And you go into happens. it very confident, and you'll notice the slightest like the slightest thing, like someone changes the direction of their step, or they step farther yeah. than you thought they were gonna step, and you make it, and you're like, dude, that could be how bad. the fuck did I make that? <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no way I should have made that. I see. No, no, I saw this guy like jump off. He was like. I remember the first time I saw him like jump off the porch. It wasn't even like, it wasn't even like a jump off the porch. Like you were hanging out on the railings, and then, like I walked by and I was like, I did like a double take. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, you're just sitting there, and like jumped off and did like his hiss thing, and I was like, that's freaking cool, dude. And, and then I started doing. I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> really? Yeah. And then I started doing it in Carnival. I was like, oh, I'm gonna start doing this. You know, yeah. he start he does that. Like that works. It's cool. It's different. So in Carnival, I started jumping off the of planners. And I noticed how effective of a scare it was. And honestly, you probably won't see anyone other than me and him really doing big, or him, doing like jumping off stuff high or doing those kind of slides or anything. It's yeah. just, it's we're trying to create a creative, that's a weird way of saying it, a creative way of saying like, we're doing it differently. Yeah. yeah. There, yeah. There's, you know, a million ways to slide, but you always see the same four types of slides just, mm -hmm. and you're up. Like there's not anything special to it, so... You know, people have crawled, people have, you know, done weird slamming, people have even changed up the way that they slide. 
and it's just cool to see the sport evolve and like you know I'd like to say that we're we're helping it along oh, and we're gonna have kids in three to four years that are gonna be showing just us up and we're gonna be like well okay <laughs> there's, kids, there's kids now that we know yeah. and you know they're, they're really like yeah, they're 15 15 and younger these kids are coming in and they're sliding and they're killing it. Like they'll go to the rink. They're doing tricks. They have it understood. Yeah, and it's not fucking fair. Yeah. But it's also <laughs> to the point where like every single one of us was like that at one point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And everyone has their bad injury that scares. That them. scares them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and some of us have. You would asked two years, years ago. ago. Yeah. I would have been out in that ring probably going nuts. nuts. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Fucking got it. Went to a mosh pit and broke my ankle. Oh. Yeah. That'll do it. Though. So fucking paranoid to do anything. Oh yeah. yeah, and you're worried you're gonna Just bust your ankle. I had a ankle, and that's, that's like that's, that's something you need with the slide. That was the fucking run and take off and then do it. it. Like, you I mean, knock on wood, I haven't had like a crazy yeah. injury. This guy's got his share of injuries, but I for sure had one. That, like, oh, dude, this one killed. It, it rattled me for about a year, honestly. A good year. Like my sliding was changed completely. I we was, were pretty much like gunning for him to be a part of the Cave Brigade, and we're like, all right, we're gonna do the Cyber Brigade Day. And like, see if anyone else pit or like peaks our interest. Like, we always like to see, you know, how people are Who's coming out up there, and you know, want to help people once they're out because they're not just like, oh yeah, we're we're scouting. Because yeah. yeah, ninety percent of the time, Cyber Brigade is not for that. Yeah, yeah. It's literally just so we can slide with our fans and they can have a chance to literally learn from us or talk just be able to, to slide with us, talk to us, and meet us as people rather than well, like. You're surprised they can show something. You know, you never yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. honestly, these kids yeah. never like. Holy shit, that's cool. They're yeah. doing tricks and setups that we've never seen before. Yeah. So we were we were eyeing John and he was doing distance jumps and he just what fucking face oh, like broke your first nose. slide. Dude. I was doing I so I showed up and I had there was a lot of chatter about people like watching me for decade and stuff and I had, I had kind of known probably shouldn't have known but I knew and I had been working on this backwards jump and I'm telling you I had this trick down. Like, I had it down. I had this backwards jump down where I, I could clear like a good amount of like a good amount you of space like doing good, it. Like four feet and jump when I first started doing tricks, I was still using my gorilla gloves, mm -hmm. which what he still uses, which are his knuckle sliding. You don't insane. slide on your hands, you slide on your knuckles. And so basically it was, I'd never slid on ground that was that waxed. Yeah. So when I went for that backwards jump, my hands went down and I just slid and I face planted. I dislocated my shoulder. Mm -hmm. My teeth completely went through my lip and I broke my nose. Oh, boy. and it Just was full on smack. And from that point on, like, I ended up getting on Decay the next year, but that injury, like, humbled me and it also, it also, like, scared me. Like, for a long time, I was very in my head about tricks and doing certain things, and I had to just, like, honestly, the thing, you kind of told me some stuff and it kind of helped me push, but I just had to let go and be like, all right, I, this is an injury that, if you're more timid to do things, you're going to be injured. You're going to injure yourself. It was the more. same thing for me when I first went to Gorilla Gloves and it was at the rink. I went for a jump and it, like I had jumped this distance 12 times before, like easily could do this distance, whatever. Jump it and my my hands landed and just went Ooh. and immediately face planted. Luckily, I didn't have nearly as bad of an injury as him, but it rocked me. I, and, yeah, yeah, we, we saw, saw that. We, we saw the cave. Like I said, in summer stream. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away by the performance. I was like, these guys are legit. What show did you see? The second show on Saturday. Oh, okay. Because I had to show Cosmo Matter Space and I was like, all right, you guys are sold. You guys are sold. Cosmo Matter Space. I immediately bought one of these. I did the one I Oh, that's rad, man. Yeah, I'm going to put that on my vest pretty good. I got a lot of patches on my vest, but that's been one I've been wanting to put on my vest to show some support. Because we were blown away. We literally had a busy schedule that weekend and we. We want to make sure that we keep upping the ante and making sure that people have something to see every year. And like, luckily, we keep having you know people like this every single year. We have you know one or two people added to the group that will just blow away the rest of us. And you know, old farts like me have to like step up our game and like try to uh, keep this kid up. Puts up a good ass competition, though. <laughs> Seriously, honestly, he's no old fart. <laughs> the last the last two years, I've been dealing with like bad time. injuries. Like even the last the last week or the last second to last week of haunt this year, yeah. uh, I was hopping off a porch and my left ankle completely turned sideways and I got a grade three sprain. Oof. Um, I was completely out that weekend, which it sucks because it was the like the first Friday of the last like real weekend and that's the best weekend yeah and i was benched that entire weekend benched. 
And luckily it wasn't fractured, but I was like this close to completely tearing my ligament. Um, and I did everything I could to heal enough to work that last weekend. And I, sh I mostly shouldn't have, but I still did. And you can ask him because I was gonna just walk on my own because I'm very stubborn when it comes to that. Oh. And he literally forced me to like use him as a crutch to get me to first aid. And then afterwards, I went backstage and popped as many pain pills as I could to like try to work another hour on this I see injury. See him back out there. And I'm just like Nuts, just man. crying as I'm just trying to stay out and not be a bitch, but I just couldn't. I finally went up to you. I was like, dude, go home. Yeah. Done. And then the next morning, I woke up to just an entirely purple foot. And then, so I went to urgent dude, care. And the that doctor went, "You're bad. not." Haunt. Uh, I think I first went when I was in second grade. My mom would have me being babysat every single year that they would go up until I was in second grade, and she would come back with this ghost beanie baby. Yeah. yeah. Like every year she'd bring me a beanie baby. I'm like, I want to go to this magical place with the beanie babies. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom was like, Okay, thinking, Oh yeah, this kid's gonna be so scarred. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make so much money by not having to take him to knots. And boy, was she wrong. Because <laughs> walked in, I saw a slider and ghost sound, and I was terrified. But I'm like, I want to do that. Yep, yep. And then every single year after that, I would go and like, I would be that guest, just trying to talk to the sliders, like, what kind of gear do you use, or how old do you have to be to work? <laughs> and then as soon as I turned 18, I, I was applying, still in high school, but I got the job and I got to work a maze. But the rest is history. There you go, there you go man. Super cool. How do y'all get into character every night? Oh, oh man. <laughs> uh, Limp Bizkit? Lynn is good, right? Honestly, it's just one of those days. You don't want to wake up. Yeah, seriously. I have a bunch of different. I have a bunch of different. I have a playlist with a bunch of different songs. They all vary in like. I listen to a lot of like Denzel Curry. Hell yeah. Suicide Boys. And then specifically Break Stuff. That one. That one old. Yeah, that man. That song gets this man fired up. Um, and then. That's pretty much it, honestly. Like, I'm not like. Merrick. I'm not like getting into character or anything. Like we shoot the shit and walk over oh, yeah. Yeah. to rope drop. I could probably like me and Matt were together. together, 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 together we should meet him and probably start backstage. Well, and you, you guys, that guy's like crazy, man. Like he, he's <laughs> one of the <laughs> nicest. <laughs> yeah, he's so nice. I ever meet though. He's but like on so streets, genuine. I'm just like wondering about his like vocal cords and like. Oh, we heard it after gonna start bleeding. That guy was like dying. Oh, at the last night, he's going to like sleep So I was just, I was like. Backstage, as like as he was finishing, and I heard him like yelling. He had this whole entire thing, like whole entire like curtain call type thing. Yeah, was, like, leaving it all out there, which was cool. I don't think I have a ritual, honestly. I uh, it doesn't ever hit me. You know what sucks is uh, we'll go out there to warm up, um, stretch out, get our slides in, you know, just to warm up the body. Um, but it won't, it won't, I won't be able to get into the zone until I get that first scare. Yep. That's, once I get that first scare, I just know from there. For me, it's rope drop. Rope drop. Rope drop. That was, that gets me in the zone immediately because it's like the coolest thing ever. We're, we're lucky enough to all be a part of rope drop. Yeah. So we're yeah. walking out and as you're walking through the fog and you hear the, the, crowd. the soundtrack going, as soon oh as the crowd God. sees yeah. you. They, they start cheering and like we definitely feed off that energy. The more oh, yeah. energy they give us, the more energy we want to get back. Mm -hmm. um, and, even the there's, that hits. and even there's nights that like, you know, you're not feeling it. You're like, man, I feel sick or I don't want to be here. I'm really tired. As and as scared. soon as you get those scares, it just starts to pump you up, pump you up, pump you up. It's funny though. We'll, we'll be backstage and we'll be like, oh, crowd's killer tonight. You know, like. There's, it's so crazy the chemistry the crowd has. Mm -hmm. Like you'll go out there and you'll just be getting constantly good scares. People that are like, whoa, like actually getting into it. And then the, the next night you'll go out and people are like, fuck Nothing. you. Or like not, no reaction. That's the worst. And the worst when you put in a lot of energy for a scare, like if me or him are like jumping off the porch, like, you know, eight feet in the air, landing on ourselves and like crawling and doing all this cool shit. And you're walking by a guest are like, huh. And you're like, at least give me like a hey or something like <laughs> give me some kind of reaction yeah. like man that hurt like a bitch <laughs> seriously like I think that's what me and him always get even if he doesn't care it's like yeah that was, that was, that was, that was powerful, powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Just just keep away. Away. we love it no it's it's true though like um the crowd like he said um it brings a whole nother level to it you know if the crowd isn't with us and we, we're not performing to our best ability that's no, why you see the shenanigans on like Thursday yeah, and Sundays because yeah. there's no crowd and usually like 
the crowds will come, and those are the people that have, like, the passes, and they'll just come to, like, chill out at, at Birdcage and watch people, and, like, you scare the same people, like, 12 times, and by the time you hit these these people so many times, they're not giving you any reaction, you just get bored. Come to Kmart Bench at 10.30 at night. You guys hang on Kmart a lot? Yep, that was our bench. Dang. Kmart's fun. Okay, you probably didn't see us there that much, strictly because that is not good ground for sliding no. over there. You'll probably see, like... The reason why I bring up 10.30. You'll see Morty there a lot. Yeah. You'll see uh, Forks will go in there. Yeah. We, we see a lot of, like... I don't know, when I went over there, it was always packed with, like, the chickens, like... Spider. Saloon girls, a lot spider. Of stuff. And, like, Saloon there's a lot girls. of people over there. There's a lot going on. But for us, it's like... Our talents are by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and we're definitely not people that stand still. There, no, there are yeah. a lot of talent that'll like they'll find a place that they really enjoy. So it used to be really bad at like Birdcage or Fog Alley, and they got very angry people for porching. It was something that Ghost Town was known for. Sadly, yeah. it was people just going back yeah. up to their porch, I mean, going I into the shadows, I'll be honest. sliding out, and then going back into the porch and like talking to their, mo- their monster friends. I'm like, hey, that was a good slide, and then like the next person would go. It was almost like being at a skate spot yeah. and it wasn't scary and I haven't seen it with these guys bad at all and honestly with talent the last couple of years it's been good because they've been getting on us yeah we're constantly running yeah, laps if true. you can get scares as you're moving it just shows more talent definitely like, it's easy enough to you know just stand in a dark corner and slide out when someone's coming by but what makes you better than a maze monster if you're doing that I think the craziest thing is uh, we, we had never really worked together um, <laughs> But we hang out so much that, like, once we got out there together, we were constantly running into each other. We just, we had the same chemistry. It was just like, you would go to a place and you notice that no monsters are there. You're like, dude, this is mine. <laughs> like, I'm taking Ghost Rider. Like, yeah. no one's here. Yeah, like, we made it. Mine. Dude, by the second like, five mind. minutes later, this guy pulls up. He's like, all right, let's get it. And then we're, we're going. And then all of a sudden, like, seven people pull up. And you're like, yo, split up, dude. Like, or then that's fucking just your, cover. That's just your time to say, like, all right, this spot's kind of jammed. Like, let's yeah. go to the next one. Like, let's see where else is empty. That's why I like taking laps so I can yeah. figure out where there's not a lot of people. Yeah. Me and you would always come and pass. Oh, yeah. Me. Always. <laughs> and it would always be in opposite directions. And that's what I thought was so cool. And then there was one night, the first weekend... We had a wrecking crew. Yeah. And it was, oh it was my like, God. dude, it was like, dude, we just decided like, hey, Ghost Town? Uh, Dr. Dr. Yeah. 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 yeah, dude, there's like a scene in there where it's like four sliders just going at it, just serpentining in between each other. Yeah, yeah. bro, it was me, him, Seth, you know, you know Seth, yeah. uh, and Lemus. And then Eric Saunders. Eric Saunders was there for a little bit, but then he kind of straggled away. We just kept like cycling in with each other, and like we had just you know four sliders deep, just like sprinting Dude. through our laps. And every single like every single person wanted to be in the front, so we just kept going faster and faster and faster. Yeah. Like, and then we just kept getting like picked off on ourselves. Like, tired of going back to get water or something. Yeah. And then we all went and got like a water break. We were like, that was sick. That was, just, <laughs> that was insane. It takes sprinting with like a grain of salt because I think people, when they hear sprinting, they honestly think that we're running. Yeah. yeah. It's not that. We move so fast that it, we just kind of have to call it sprinting. Whether it's going from, you know, uh, mobbing up a ghost rider, uh, you know, from the entrance to the exit and we're going into each slide, getting up, going into another slide. Like, we'll get up there so fast. People are like, how the fuck do you get up there so fast? You're like, dude, I don't stop yeah. moving. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where, uh, gotta you know, keep going, keep going, kinda, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. we bob. Anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. And that's another thing that keeps us in the zone, is just keeping your feet moving. We just, we just, just seen that with so many people, people too, like, hang out in a spot, two minutes later, 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 like, like be in the same, same spot, spot and like they can run the corner and like, oh, we're just we're here, just here. Oh, get around after that. Yeah, 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 Cause we would have little like regimens almost where I'd be like, all right, let's hit, let's hit Kmart to whatever, what's the, Candy store. Oh, yeah. Candy, candy we go, we'll go uh, oh, Kmart. Candy. We'll go from Kmart, Kmart Schoolhouse. Yeah, yeah. We'll, like, we did like little circles, like so two laps there, two laps there, two laps the whole thing, and then we'll go to Bird Bird Cage or Ghost Rider Exit and spend like 20 to 25 minutes there just holding down the zone. It's yeah. crazy too, because even when we get in a zone or like get into a uh, you know a solo area like Bird Cage or Ghost Rider or Kmart, like. Regardless on if we're just staying there, we're also creating laps within that area. Mm-hmm. Like he'll be at one other side of Birdcage, and I'll be on the other. And I'll know I'll know that he'll be heading back towards me soon. So then we'll swap. We'll just know that we're gonna swap soon. We're just constantly just rotating, rotating, rotating. And I think that's one of the biggest things that you got to know how to do when you come out to the streets. Yeah. Uh, is you know, you, this is about the guests, but also be weary of the other monsters around you. 
be and the, in and the fact that you're being seen at all times there's all no times. there's no hiding so you have to make sure you're in character at all times that's why yeah moving makes more sense it's not really scary to just see even if you're the scariest looking character just standing there waiting to do a scare like it's not scary you're not a character anymore you're just a guy waiting yeah. to scare i think that's one of the biggest things i ever learned i used to work at disney and you know performing there they they preach about how dude there's always someone watching yeah, yeah. always there's too many people here for you to not be looked at um and then the same thing goes for knots yeah you, if you're if you're caught standing there someone sees you mm -hmm. and whether that's just you know a person or a camera or god forbid management mm -hmm. yeah. um, you want to always be in it always be moving always be looking at the next guest and saying all right this is how i'm going to do this one and then be uh, be aware of who's behind that guest because yeah, once yeah. you go from that guest where are you going to go after Definitely. you want to know whether you're going to go straight or you're going to turn around you got to be aware of crowd control you want to know how the crowd's going to move after you get up from that slot mm -hmm. uh, you're coming in hot you got to hit this tight gap that's closing up you got to figure out how you're going to get out of it um you know, i'm not really good thing. at that kind of stuff <laughs> i'm more just like i just kind of do it yeah yeah like i kind of I'm kind of weird when I scare, I kind of just go for like every scare. Every single finish. one. <laughs> but I go for like, I literally go for like every scare I see, and they'll piss this guy off. They're like, dude, you're hogging all the snow. Yeah, we'll be running together, and he'll be in front of me, and he'll be. Because if you're just like, dude, if you see someone scare something? you, like you're, you're being scared, and like a monster comes up right afterwards, like. You, don't, you have to like be able to reset to get scared again. Like, yeah. you can't get that second scare, or if you get that scare, it's like way less, like, oh god, instead yeah. of like a, oh shit, like. Yeah. So if you have someone scaring like right in front of you, like I'll just stop and like let them run up like 15 feet and like okay now I can go kind of thing. That's why running with people can can be hard, but like we found like we wouldn't always run together, but like I mean most of the time I ran by myself or he would run by himself, but we would meet up a lot and like this kid like he's just fast, so I'd have to like really move like really move fast to keep up with him. Like he's a fast, he's probably the fast. I'm gonna be honest, he's the fastest in Ghost Town. Like there's no one faster than him. I'm sorry, they can put up an argument. He's got a long ass leg, so they, 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 they want to put up an argument. But yeah, he's he's for sure fast. But there's some other uh, like movement character wise, um, like we worked our characters worked well together. Like we were able to like flow and like it was really like we were friends before, but like right off the bat we got on the streets. Me and him and our buddy Linus ran together. He was the raccoon. Okay. Um, we would we would like we would, we just had a good thing going. The crazy like, thing is crazy. too is even when we were like super in between the crowd and just coming out, we would see a guest and we would we would just know yeah. the timing of each other. We would both go at it at the same time and hit it, hit that slide, hit that ground at the same time, and and it was effective too. It's so effective because you just how do you react in a moment like that? You hear a loud ass bang. You hear the weirdest sound ever from both sides, like you have nowhere to go. And you're fuck, just fuck next year. <laughs> fucking terrified. Absolutely no, cause, terrified. Because uh, I think, I, it was like the last weekend, me and you started, we went to Fog Alley and we hit a slide at the same time. And I don't know who it was, but they came up to us and they were like, they were like, dude, that was so like synchronized. Yeah, you <laughs> well, how'd you do that? And I was like, I, I don't know. We used to have right minds or something. And we came out and we knew that we were both going back in and we both wanted the scare and I knew he was going to go first. So I let him go first, but we hit the ground at the same time and he went in and I went like right behind him. And it was just one of those things where it just looked so smooth and it worked so well. But at the same um, time we're running together, we are competing. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. It's a competition. You're constantly competition. trying to one-up your friends. You're all, you, know, you don't want to be the guy that's, like, not pulling his weight. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And every single friendly. person should be, like... It's all friendly. It's so friendly. We keep ourselves accountable. Like, if someone's not pulling their weight or not, like, you know, doing what we think they can, we'll, we'll call them out, like, yo, what's up with you tonight? Like, you good? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you can tell. Y'all like, ever, ever, ever need a free scare, scare, by the way? This guy's got loud noises. Hell yeah. Or if you want to catch, catch him at 10 30, sleeping on the bench in Kmart. Shit, sometimes you gotta get in there. You nap. sleep? Oh, I loved finding the sleeping people. I would bring as many monsters as I could to, like, just stand over there. I mean, that's a pretty people. peaceful area over there. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty peaceful. No one can see it. What I'm trying to say is, I'm trying to get a bunch of people to know for next year. That way, you know, you're fucked. Yeah, we'll find you. And it's good content. It's good content, right? Yeah. But yes, if you ever do it, it's easy. You're probably not. Off night, you need someone to just carry. Just gotta reinvigorate yeah. your, your hope. Yeah, yeah. That's I'm pretty, I'm pretty jumpy like that too. Yeah, Most people that know I'm pretty, scare. I'm pretty jump. I jump around a little scary. Don't do that. Don't do that at the event. Yeah, seriously. When you're out there though, you can't really get scared. No, 
Yeah, yeah. it's just more annoying. You'll hear like a loud noise in your ear, like. And they're like, I got him. And you're like, dude, I just don't want you slapping. No, I didn't. Like, yeah. you 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 Maybe death. You didn't get me. I love the whole like, <laughs> boo, like that. Like, really? You're you, Damn. you're walking around watching us, and you only thing you can come up with is boo. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, the worst was some kid tried to dunk on me, and he like completely slapped me in the head and knocked my bowler hat off when I was boardwalk. And that was almost one of my I almost, like my first haunting was almost like dunk. Oh dunk, no. Dunk. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of. All names are I love being little, little kids on Saturday nights, man. That was my favorite thing. Oh, yeah. like, like, there was one kid that walked through Kmart, Kmart, was like, ha ha, you can't touch me. And I, and I, I, I literally, literally turned, turned around, around and went, I can. Yeah. You can't just walk You can't. It's like, gosh. The kid was like, ah, fuck, fuck. This kid's like, six. This kid's like, five, ten, two. What I like to do sometimes, like, I'll never do anything, but, like, if someone's messing with me, I'll just, like, put up my glove and be like, all right, dude, I got essentially have brass knuckles on me. Oh, yeah. This is like, like, kids pull up their pants in front of you and they post up and you're like, Really? So you're like, you got like a big ass metal plate on your hand. You're like, you're like let's hit do me. it. Which cheek? Let's do it. There's security <laughs> looking at you right there. Like, just do it already. Yeah, one of our bosses literally told me, like, hey, there's a guest that's been causing issues, but we haven't gotten him on site doing this. it. Like, oh, yeah. he's, he's in that Should shop. You be bait? He's like, can you be bait? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I waited for him to come out, and I, oh my god, I bothered the fuck out of this dude. I was calling him a little bitch. Well, I wasn't saying that word, but like, you know, making all noise. <laughs> You're not gonna do it. Like doing kiss, you know, he's like, hey, give me a kiss. I'm going, I'm like, I'm out of your league. And he was getting so angry. And I'm like, come on, come on. I'm like, he's like, yo, I'll fucking go. And he's like, putting his fist. So I'm just going, like trying to egg him on. I'm like, swing, swing. This is the most exciting thing I've ever done. And he actually let me do this. And he didn't do anything. And I was so disappointed. Undercover, man. Yeah. yeah. They know. That's the That's best. The best. Yeah, they do know. And I'm like walking back and my boss like, so did you do anything? I'm like, well, he told me to kiss him. I told him I was out of his league, and then he said he would swing on me, but then he didn't. And she's like, all right, cool. I'll keep following him. I'm like, all right. <laughs> um, what do you guys advise to people who want to become scared one day? Like, uh, just, 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 just in general, just in general, in general at any event, event really. Like, um, find people that are a part of the event. Um, Learn yeah, when, the, like, like, learn how old you have to be. Usually, every single event around here is 18 plus because we work past 10. Yeah. yeah. Um, find someone that can help you realize like when the hiring events are. It it changes for every single event, so it could be universal in their their auditions, which are apparently very hard. I've never been a part of them, so I don't know. Um, Knotts has their open hire that they post on their website. Come you know June, July, just to constantly check that. And then just go in with an open mind. Um, like, don't be dead set on one place. Like, a lot of people are coming in like, oh yeah, I'm going to be Ghost Town first year. 90% of the time, that's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I went and wanted to be streets my first year. Everyone does. But they're like, oh yeah, we ran out of street spots. But we do have a spot in Dominion that's an athletic spot, and you have that build. Like, are you down? I'm like, yeah, of course. The maze was super boring. But our, our room was super fun because we made it fun. Yeah. Like it was a very pretty maze, not a very scary maze, but we made it as scary as we possibly could just by having fun in the maze. Like You'll have fun wherever you are as long as you make it fun. Don't be dead set on going one place because time after time, you'll be there eventually. Yeah. No one, a lot, Not a lot of people go to you know Scary Farm to work a year because it's, it's a bug. You catch it and like every single year, like, my body hurts. It's my last year. Never doing it again. And then hiring comes around again. You're like, ah, fuck it. Dusting off the pads. Doing it one more year. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's one thing that that I think is different than when I first started. Is like, my first year at open hire when I showed up, it was kind of just like, everyone was just like, I just want streets. I don't care what it is. And like, they had like a cut. They, they had no ghost town spots. Whether it was like maybe one marketing. They had no. They had like one ghost town spot, and one person got it, and they had a couple carnival, maybe one or two, and then they had a couple fiesta, a couple camp. Mm -hmm. Now it's like these kids come in and they're just like, "Yeah, I'm just expecting ghost town, or I'm not gonna work." And it's like, like I think you need to understand to appreciate the event. Like I'm not just like it's hard for me to say that because I haven't done a maze. I was on streets, but at the same time, there's a lot of people that are on streets now, uh, like not just in ghost town, but all over. Some in ghost town that don't like appreciate what they have oh, like 100%. they don't realize that they're on streets yeah. it's like you don't understand that like back in the day like for for street or for maze talent it had to take they had to do five years of maze just to be considered for streets yeah. yeah and these people just come their first year and get streets in ghost town and they just they take it for granted 
And like, and the, best, yeah. the best is when people, they'll get maze from streets and they're like, I'm not working. Like, yeah. If I'm not working Allow, streets, I don't want to work. It's like, like an opportunity to get better. Yeah. Allow yourself to, you know, do the maze. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Just, like some of the best monsters that have ever worked not worked in a maze. Mm -hmm. You know, it's true. Like, here's the thing. I know everyone wants to be on streets and I know streets are killer. I've, I've worked them, but I've also worked a maze. You gotta understand, people don't come to knots for street zones. Honestly, they that's just it. Yes. Like the general popu population of the people that come to knots don't come for street zones, uh, and that's just plain and simple. They come for the mazes. If I'm, so if if I'm going on YouTube to look up the event, I'm not looking at you know street talent POV. Yeah, no. I'm looking at you know maze walkthroughs. Seriously, yeah, yeah. like and you're gonna grateful. see everyone. Be grateful. If you're in a maze, you're gonna see, like you're gonna see. Almost everyone that walks into the park that day. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty cool. I know it's kind of weird, but like, I when I worked in a maze, like, uh, it was my first year ever working something like that. It was kind of my first ever th thing that I did a performing job for. Um, and like the amount of like celebrities that walk through that you get to scare, like that shit's cool. Yeah. Honestly, like I that shit's cool. I remember going home to my mom and being like, tonight I scared, you know, Kat Von D, or yeah. tonight I scared Neil Patrick Harris and his boyfriend, his boyfriend Dude, cried. I'll never like, forget, 2017, Mac Miller, Ariana Grande came through. I scared Ariana, didn't know it was her. Mac Miller comes up in my face, goes, fuck you. No. <laughs> like, Yo, Mac Miller said, fuck you. That was so sick. And like, I got so hyped up about it. On street, someone's like, oh my God, like this person's here, this person's here. Fuck well, we never get JoJo's to here. Fuck that Oh, bitch. JoJo? Yeah, JoJo. I remember my, when I was in Boardwalk. And you never she came in. No, she came in. They didn't see him. We only get to actually like interact with them if we get pulled to like take photos with yeah. them. Or sometimes they do like guest scaring. So like last year, I got to scare with uh, Travis Barker and his family. It was super cool. We got to like teach them how to scare. Um, the son was scaring in like brand new white Air Force Ones while the daughter was scaring in Yeezys. And the entire time, like I'm just looking at their shoes going, no. Those are like five hundred dollars shoes, and they're gonna mess them up. Like I'm, I'm wearing just like literally duct tape with steel toes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's Travis Barker. The guy can afford it. The guy's I mean, like it's still it's just, like it hurts you. Like, yeah, it hurts you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like sneakers. Obviously, we like sneakers. We're both wearing Yeezys, but like I'm wearing Vans. I'm wearing slippers, we're, man. We're looking at these kids, just like or all these guests coming in with these like three thousand dollars shoes, or we're scaring for minimum wage and like. Just yeah. surviving on Del Taco for a month. They're yeah, like, damn, these these people have so much money. Yeah, I think it's more than Del Taco. We got a variety of Dude, places we, we hit up. Out of yeah. We have a legit. We have a legit rotation. It's like Thursday. It's like, all right, we're hitting Canes. Friday, we're hitting like, and we're open to you know, we're open to suggestions on Friday. So we go to Fa, go to our Tacos, you know, get a Cheeto Shout out to the Cheeto Rito. Um, <laughs> It's yeah. like you get, you get off work and you just want yeah, something you know? fast and you want something yeah, easy. You don't want to cook yourself food. Saturday, salt and pepper. Sunday, well, what do we yeah, dust off? Sunday? It would be whatever we can do. Whatever. Like yeah. our, friend group, our friend group was like tied too because we'd always be down to eat. Shout oh, out to yeah. Devin, he's a Forsaken. Riley from Camp. Carter. He had that Carter Hobbs. Yeah, he did? Yeah, he's, oh, he's awesome. Oh, yeah. he's, he's, he's great. Yeah, he was fun there. Yeah, we want two times almost a year over there, man. We want him. We want him in Ghost Town with us. I don't think, from what I've been hearing, I don't think he wants to go to Ghost Town. He wants to stay. He wants to stay. He doesn't know what he wants. We know what he wants. We know what's best for him. I think we know what he wants, but he doesn't know what he wants. It's it's hard in that situation, you know. It's you got two time monster of the year. You got slider of the year. Rookie of the year. Did he get slider too? Yeah, he got slider. Slider. The thing is, is go, like oh, we've talked so about weird. this. We talked about this all all at the end of season this year. Ghost Town can't be stacked. Yeah. You know, you have to have talent spread out. Yeah. Yeah. Riley's a phenomenal monster. You gotta stay in the hollows. Honestly, he loves that character. And when it and when it comes to awards, yeah, it's it's a popularity contest in the end. Seriously, very rarely like. He he obviously deserved his award. Like he got Sly of the Year. I I've gotten Sly of the Year twice in Ghost Town, and I was like, ah, I didn't deserve it. There's other people that have done cool shit. Like I was so glad to see him win Sly of the Year. And if he didn't win it, I want Carter to win it. But you know, we've had rookies of the year, you know, get sent to another zone because they weren't good enough, or they weren't you know right for the, they weren't right for the zone. Yeah. I'm not saying they weren't good enough, and I'm not saying they weren't a good rookie. It's just. You know, awards taken with a grain of salt. You can be monster of the year. It doesn't mean you're the best monster. No, yeah, yeah, no, that's. I think and a lot of the times, it's just like you talk to a lot of people. People knew your name. Like, 
Like, like my, my first year working in mazes, mazes, people didn't know I was a rookie. I just, I just didn't talk, talk to people. I was, yeah. I was a nervous little wreck. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was just there to scare and like not become enemies with anyone. <laughs> like I was there to scare you. So I got most creative, and then my buddy got rookie of the year. And then afterwards, they're like, "Man, like we were like one vote away from getting you monster of the year." I'm like, "Man, I was just hoping for like rookie if I was getting anything near that." They're like, "Wait, you're a rookie?" I'm like, "Yeah." So it's like, "Yeah, rookie of the year was cool, but it's like doesn't mean you're the best monster in the maze." Or yeah, so. And the, the worst, worst part is when people go around saying, like, oh, yeah, like, I'm hot shit because I got the award. Yeah. It, you got voted on by other monsters. Like, <laughs> And Warlock, they don't even do, like, they don't even, like, they vote, but, like, they don't even actually do a voting. Like, it's just decided by, like, four people. Yeah. It's like, oh, this person won by a landslide, but we're going to give it to this other guy because he's been here for ten years. Yeah. 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 It's That's just, me talking, by the way. This is I just think, think that, that um, ultimately, ultimately there should, should be... Yeah, yeah, awards are cool and all, mm-hmm. but, but in the end, they everyone's there because they love it. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You shouldn't be doing it for awards, but it is It is very nice to get recognition. Yeah, yeah. Because I do love, I love the way uh, Ed and all them run, like Ghost Town, though, because yeah. our banquet was, like, legit. Like, it was a House of Blues, like, foundation it, like it was, like, really good food. Like, it was crazy. Like, it was like an event. It was a function. Mm-hmm. It was a function. It was a function, man. It was a function, man. It is, it is. It really I mean, I never got to that, that room, room, but I've been in the main rooms. Room, so I've yeah. been in there, but, yeah, yeah and and the House of Blues is just a freaking, that, 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 that new, new one, one they built, built is beautiful. Oh, because oh, it used to be in downtown yeah, Disney, Disney, right? And then Disney was like, hey, you know, we want you to play more family for the And the House of Blues was like, hey, you know, fuck you. And then they built a map, one across the street. Yeah. At least that's what the dead candies told me. I don't know. Pretty much, like, every single time Disney would have these certain rules, like, hey, your acts can't cause mosh pits or do this, and if they do that, they're not allowed back kind of thing. And then these bands would come in, that shit would happen, the bands can't control it half the time. And Disney would be like, alright, they can't come back, sorry. Like, yes, we get that you're a venue, but we're also in Disney's property, and we have to make sure like this is a Disney stamp kind of thing. Um, so finally Live Nation was like, it's too difficult to get acts here, it's too expensive, so let's move. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, down the street. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I love that. Honestly, the Garden, Garden Walk, Walk venue is really nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go see their a show there in January. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Garden Walk. I'm mean, actually so many bands there, man. Dead Kennedys. I was fortunate enough to actually meet the Dead Kennedys after that damn show, which was oh, yeah. really cool. Fucking Anthrax. I've seen them there. You know, I've seen so many iconic. I go. I get a lot of fucking free tickets to go see tribute shows there. Because I know all these freaking bands that you know do these tribute bands. So I get. I go there all the time. Even this guy, we'll go down. Have a couple drinks and just chill, chill you know. I mean, it's, it's, good, it's a good little spot. Um, yeah, before we close, though, do you guys have a, a favorite scare, favorite moment from this season? Oh, Jesus, here we go. Favorite moment? Does anyone have one off the top of the head? I mean, my favorite moment, like, ever, or doing something haunt was a grill battle. <laughs> I feel like we have to talk about that, right? Yeah. I mean, this was last year, but this was when he was still in Carnival. Yeah, gorilla battle. Um, we had a gorilla battle. But I was the gorilla before he was, and his first year. People just kept saying, like, oh, yeah, he's copying your character, he's copying your character. I've never seen it before. Yeah. And then suddenly everyone thought we had beef. Like, they named him Kirkland because he was, he was just, like, he was Costco-branded me, something. Like, I had nothing to do with any of this. Like, and the fact that I ended up meeting him, like, John's a cool guy. I like John. <laughs> but, uh, it, was all this fake, like, it was all this fake drama and beef, and, like, they were just, like, yeah, he was saying. And then last year, um... Both of our cast leads were talking shit for us. Like, oh yeah, my gorilla could beat the shit out of your gorilla. And then the other cast lead was like, nah, 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 mine's the OG. He'll fuck your guy up. So finally, like, our cast leads come up to, or not our cast leads, our TCs, they come up to us like, hey, uh, 10 o'clock, we're meeting at the, the train tracks. We're doing a gorilla battle. We're like, wait, what? What? Like, management's telling us to do this? And we had no idea what we were doing. So we go up and we, like, kind of, like, beat our chest and stuff. We're like, are we just supposed to, like, out gorilla each other? And then we were just like, all right, cool. And I shook his hand and we walked away. And then our cast leads came up afterwards. Like, those are our bosses. Like, And they come up like, hey, that first gorilla battle was lame. We're doing another one. Like, really, really do this one. And we're like, okay. And I went after him. Like, I grabbed him. Like, I threw him to the ground. Uh, we had, like, a full battle. And they were like, okay, now it's done. And then the, and then the day after, it was like, what, wasn't it like a Saturday? Yeah. Like, it was actually a busy day. Like, we didn't expect this to be like on the train tracks in between Norwalk and like Ghost all Town. of Ghost Town, all of Carnival. But our cast is like, all right, one final battle, like 
choose two fighters to go with you. We're like, we're doing what now? So, <laughs> in Ghost Town, we had a black belt who I immediately chose, and then a guy who's like really, really good at MMA, and he's a really talented fighter. I'm like, oh man, my team's gonna mess up his team. My bag, say that. <laughs> and oh, one of his <laughs> fighters ran. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Thanks, James. And, <laughs> and then the other one got immediately put into a headlock by, oh, by Dead. That was and then a crazy he part. just went at it. So I. By the time I got over there, all the current was already blocking the whole train tracks, and all the ghost town was over there. And then Trey was just standing in the middle, and I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just like walk over and I just had a mob yeah. around the train tracks, oh, yeah. just watching to see what happened. And we had everyone just cheering for us. The board was so loud that our castings were there telling us, like, all right, clear out. And we were just like, we just kept going. <laughs> and like, I walked in, and like, this dude that was fighting was already on the ground. And I looked over, and I was like, all right. <laughs> I, like, I, I ripped off his wig cap. Oh, yeah. And he, like, kept that as a trophy. <laughs> yeah. The rest of the season, I just, like, had my hair down. Like, we I, like, we like, made our own, shit. like, really shitty, like, champion yeah, monkey belt that. out of, like, a food container and duct tape. I gave you his wig cap. I, I grabbed it. That's hilarious. And it was kind of cool to, like, have that end my, like, season in Carnival, too. And then be like, oh, now I'm, in, like, now I'm coming over to Ghost Town. It was kind of cool. It was yeah. kind of a cool way to like. He's like, now I'm going to Ghost Town Super Hunt too. To answer your question, <laughs> yeah. I think Best Scare is kind of hard. Honestly, yeah, uh, just because there's so many of them. Best yeah. moments, uh, definitely one for sure was when I was with AJ out at Birdcage. It was a late night, probably Sunday or Thursday. And, you know, we were just standing there underneath the porch and we were fucking around. And, you know, all of a sudden I just run and I jump into a slide and. Uh, as I'm in the air, I scream enchilada. Enchilada! <laughs> and I hit the ground and I drop this crowd. I, I may have actually heard, heard that. that actually. I, I may have been there when I did it. Eight, I like, like literally like eight or nine people hit the ground. And I just, just turned around and I went, what the fuck? And AJ was like, this is a thing? This, this is a thing. AJ, he, he gets, he gets so, so excited. Dude, it is awesome, man. <laughs> so then he goes out and he's like, bananas. I did. I remember that. And I, 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 I jump out. I'm like, zebra kids. I'm like, just fucking do it. what I used that So then we were doing that. And then uh, a good scare for sure. I was in Fog Alley. It was right after Rope Drop. I just went up. I'm lapping back around. I come back up Fog. And um, I go to the right, right where the gun, uh, the gun game is. And... I see this old, older uh, couple, probably in like their 70s, and I go, I don't fucking love to do that. And so I go in, I slide, I hit the ground real hard, and as I get up, I see the older lady stumbling backwards. And as she's stumbling backwards, she's talking about how she's stumbling backwards, and she's like, I'm falling, I'm falling, and she falls, and she hits the ground, and she was kind of bigger. And, and she's like, I turn on her on her shell, and she's like trying to get up, I'm like rolling, and her husband's like trying to pick her up, and he's like, my back, my back. <laughs> it was just like a total like reality TV show. Yeah, it was ridiculous. That was probably one of my favorite scares though. Cause I'm just standing there in the fog, and I'm just fucking sad out. Remember that when I was running, I scared that girl, and she's like, <laughs> oh yeah. And that's another thing is when you like, scare sounds, people, like man. the funniest thing is like the way they react. Like he scared this girl, and she turned into Tinkerbell. She was like. <laughs> yeah, dude, that like, like, like at that moment, like I'm not in character anymore. Like, are you really right? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, You're like, hello? What the fuck? Yeah. Like, that's that's that happens to be so much to you because I just laugh at everything. At everything. Like he's too. Like we had dress. He'll trip and he'll just be like. <laughs> yeah. Like we had, we have a dress rehearsal, and I'm sorry if you're watching this, but this kid. Like one of the rookies, oh like oh my god, when he fell in the bush, he's trying to jump, he's trying to jump on the planter, and he just fell in the bushes. He just, he I didn't like, know his name. He, he was a werewolf. It was Michael. No, it wasn't it Michael. Michael. It was. No, it wasn't. It wasn't him. It was another guy. <laughs> yeah. But the dude straight up had that ran with Michael. I'll be yeah, honest, if I saw it, I'd be Danny. Dude, it was Danny. 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 Dude, he fell in the bushes, and I literally was like crying. Crying for like a good 30, 45 minutes. I'd be dying too, man. I, 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 I'd, I'd take our slider test. Like, oh, I think my favorite scare this year was like, there was this big group of just super like big hood, hood ass guys. Like, they literally looked like they would just beat you up. And I'm like, well, this can either go one of two ways, so I'm just going to do it. So I just crawled at them as fast as I could, and this fucked up these dudes. And one dude just fell completely back, but his shoes stayed on the ground. <laughs> and he just kept crawling away in his socks. And then another guy, he trips, like, trying to slip. His shoe comes off, so I have this just horde of shoes. 
and I'm just like circling it as they're trying to like kick <laughs> in it, like not like I'm just a person, literally just yeah. like crawling around your shoes, and they're like. <laughs> 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 this wasn't my scare, but this was funny. I was coming around, going up fog, headed towards Ghost Rider, and I come around the corner and I see Morty there, and he's standing in front of this group of uh, like country folk, and they have their beers in their hand. And he's like standing over them, and he's tall, dude. And he's looking down at one of them, and he just goes, <laughs> and he like does like <laughs> like the slightest thing. And he like he he's a vampire, so he's like, <sighs> and he like hisses away. But as he did that, was when they reacted. So the beer goes up in the air, and it lands in his mouth. And I saw it, and I was like, I like start walking towards him, and he goes, "Cores?" <laughs> he just like he he just looked at me, and he goes, "Oh." Course and like, like just kept walking course. and that was like the fun. I love funniest, so much. The funniest yeah, thing and I just couldn't stop. The little backwards walk thing he was he, doing. He'll get on the ground and you'll think he's about to do a push up and then he'll just like do this like weird like lizard so walk creepy. like on the ground like he's Spider Man climbing a building. <laughs> that's that's, that's just also creepy. one thing I will say is there are a lot of like underrated monsters in Ghost Town that are just like beasts. They're yeah, so phenomenal. like phenomenally like, impressive and just like creative. And it's to the point where, like, they can do the dumbest shit and it'll get the most amazing scares. Like, Morty is a 100% a good example of that. Yeah, I was really with uh, Spirit, the Native American character on streets, yeah. and we're leaning up in, uh, in Kmart, and I'm just telling her, like, man, Morty always makes me laugh so hard, but the fact that he can get scares doing this stupid shit is just so impressive to me. And as I'm finishing my sentence, he's just walking by... Chasing these girls, going, it broke. I was crying. I was laughing so hard. He looks terrifying. Yeah, he's terrifying. He looks cool. He's like the only vampire in Ghost Town. The only vamp. Yeah, seriously, the only vampire. Definitely. Um, we ask all of our guests this because we are a horror podcast. What's your favorite horror movie? Oh shit, dude, I'm I'm a pussy. I can't sit at home and turn on a horror movie. Like it has to be like I mean, with dude, a like, group of people so or like I'm a scared girl. Of the, I'm scared, scared of the Goonies. Like, oh, he's scared of the Goonies. He's scared of the. He's scared yeah, of Sloth. Like, hey, you guys. Dude, dude, no, I'm not scared. scared. I'm terrified. Dude. Absolutely terrified. He's a sweetheart. No, I want to say one of my favorite like scary movies is uh, As Above, So Below. That was good. That was interesting. Yeah, I'm trying to. I think I just enjoyed the plot of it. I like when you go like the you're going deeper into hell. Yeah, yeah. That shit. That that's the part I love. That was a really real story for me too. Yeah, I had. Yes, experience like that, like searching sewers. So it was just like, oh, that's like that's like my fear though. Is, like, could you when I watch that movie, it stresses me the fuck out. Could you imagine that? Well, yeah, like, it's like fighting, it's like very claustrophobic. Yeah, and then oh, yeah. Like, like the cult that was in down there, and the, the like the way that they all kind of like slowly died off from like the sins that they've caused. Like, like the different layers. What's the movie called? called? As, As above, so below. It's really, it's a found, found footage. It was on Netflix. Footage. I don't think it's on Netflix anymore. Yeah. It's not. It's on Disney Plus now. Disney Plus. There you go. Uh, you, if you don't, if you, you have a chance, it, you, you gotta watch it. It's a really Sounds interesting story. Is Sounds of the Lambs considered a horror movie? What's well, well, that? Yeah, yeah. It yes. is. Right, that's my favorite horror It's more movie. of a thriller for me, yeah. but that's my mom's favorite. Hannibal Lecter, like man. That guy is yeah, I mean, that guy, fantastic yeah. acting. I mean, that, yeah, that movie is just... Yeah. From both, from both characters. It just speaks for itself. Yeah. I really like just, like, in-your-face horror, so I think the new Evil Dead that was released, like... 2013? Yeah, that... Amazing. It was good. It was just so gory. Like Ash himself had a cameo in it. Yeah, it was just so gory. It was so in your face. Like everyone just got mutilated. Oh yeah. And not like Saw, where it's just like you have to kind of wait a while, and then you're like, I guess there was some thinking in that, and that was pretty gory. But like it was just such an impressive movie for me. Yeah. But like everyone has their favorite slasher. Like I love Jason, but but like everyone has their favorite creature. Like Xenomorphs are my shit. I love Xenomorphs. Right there, man. Or my, I'm a, pop, I might steal that from you, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like face huggers are absolutely terrifying. Oh, okay. That is the most terrifying creature I, for me. Yeah, I have one. But uh like in HR Geiger's work, you know, completely creating that pretty much. That was, was, was way ahead of his time. Dude. Oh yeah. That, that man was such a good artist and I wanna go over to Germany and be able to actually like go see his exhibit and go yeah. into his bar, like no, Yeah, I, I'm I mean, super into horror, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's how I sink my shit. <laughs> um, gentlemen, it has been a pleasure to sit with you guys, talk, haunt, horror, all that fun stuff. I'm pretty sure we can go another like three hours. Oh, oh for sure. sure. We have we so have many too much stories. To say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of haunt, decayed. Oh, yeah. Back. So, what you got to meet Spaz. 
You got to be He's a character for sure. That's Seriously. Yeah. That's the man I've seen. If you can get him here, they get him here. That was it. I'm sure he'd love to talk to you. Second group of people has actually told us that we need to get him on. Yeah. Well, you, he'll beat your podcast he in three will. hours. <laughs> oh, for sure. This man oh, talks. He'll talk he, to you but he's also, he talks because he has the stories. He has, he's yeah. been yeah. around yeah. for so, so many, long. So many years. Yeah, yeah. Um, gentlemen, we can't thank you enough for actually coming on Scarlet Appreciation Month. Oh, absolutely. Our kind of, I think this is the last one we're doing this season. Yeah, right? probably going to be our last one. This is the last one we're doing this season. So oh, you no, guys the are bang. on the last one. <laughs> Lucky number 21. 21. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Really I had a lot of fun. It. At the end of the day, we don't look at you guys as characters. We look at you guys as our heroes. Hell yeah. Because oh, we, go, we go to these events as horror fanatics wanting to see those nightmares come to life, wanting to see those, the horror, the scares, and we walk out like every weekend, like how are they going to step it up? And every weekend we come back, they step it up. You guys yep. step it up. So we thank you for that. Uh, this whole experience with Character Appreciation Month has literally been a blessing. Meeting everybody, talking with everybody, and I'm glad the feedback has been coming back the way it is. People are knowing, fi finding out about it. They want to be on the show. They want to talk about Haunt, and we can't be more thankful for that, um, that people want to come on our show and, and do that. So I hope in the future this goes further than just our channel. Um, I hope more people start watching this and start doing it themselves because I know there's people probably out in like freaking like New York or Florida and everybody that's characters out there or even oh, yeah. here in Cali that they've people we can't get to, you know. Yeah. I want to hear everyone's story out there. I want to see this grow into something big. Um, so again, gentlemen, thank you for an amazing season. Thank you for putting on one of the greatest fucking shows in the world. And uh, we will see you guys hopefully pretty soon. Yeah. Or, you know, whenever. Yeah, We're, yeah. You know who we are. We'll find you guys. Yeah, we'll That's usually around. how it works. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this season of Scaractor Appreciation Month. We've had so many great guests on the show, and we cannot thank them enough. Um, so with that being said, uh, be sure to follow us on social media, at Knights of Horror on Twitter and at The Knights of Horror on Instagram. Gentlemen, do you guys have social medias you'd like to plug in as well or no? Do you have a, do you have a ghost town thing you want to plug? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have my personal um, Instagram scattered scabs, but I don't post much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Instagram is the Foz thirteen. Uh, Instagram is it's Carter Patrick. I, don't, I also don't post much. Yeah, I kind of just post like random like snowboard and, and haunt stuff. Really, like, <laughs> there you I go. Know. Just kind of random. Not, I don't have random. a character page, so yeah. 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 Um, but these these, uh, these all these characters we we say you can't think of them enough, and uh, we can't wait to do this again next year. Might even start as early as the summer to start getting a lot of people in for this because we've, we've got a lot of people that want to come on. And oh, yeah. A lot of people that want to return. So. I bet. Uh, if you guys are feeling a little extra generous, we have a Patreon, anywhere from a dollar to $20. So that would help us a ton. But like always, a subscribe, like, and a comment is just enough for us. Of course, these characters want to see the feedback that you guys are, you know, after watching their episode, they want to just read these amazing comments that you guys give to them. So mm -hmm. be sure to leave some comments. We are. <laughs> feel free to like message us too we're always yeah. willing to answer questions yeah and, like, for real you, you guys, guys have any other questions more. that we couldn't ask on the show oh, you, you guys, guys are interested in becoming scary characters yourselves or monsters, or monsters you know you hit them up, up. They're, they're probably, probably always welcome, welcome to uh, give you guys any preparation you guys want to the audition of course um with that being said I'm Anthony I'm Sam and this is our group of ghost town monsters from we got with Trey it was John and Carter I remembered it Good. Yeah. I, have, I, I actually have actually remember it and I remembered it. Yeah. Same as <laughs> no, uh, thank, thank you guys, guys so much, much and we will see you guys soon. soon.